Flynn was standing in the hall looking at his mother peculiarly. Eleanor gently stroked his little head. It's okay. I was just walking back from my car and I was busy on my phone, so I tripped. Is it serious? Flynn immediately went to her and held her hand. He was very worried about his mother. However, Adrian standing next to her had a suspicious look in his eyes. His son had been tricked by her. He could clearly see that this woman seemed to have fought with someone on the grass and her face had been scratched. She was already in her late twenties, and yet she was out there fighting like a child? Such immature behavior. This made him somewhat worried about how she had kept herself and his son safe abroad all these years. Eleanor looked up and felt that Adrian was staring at her. She could not help but look at him guiltily. What are you looking at? Have you never seen a woman who had fallen down before? After saying that, Eleanor felt pain in her feet and legs. It was fine if her scalp hurt a little, but her legs must have been bruised. She had to find some ointment. Unfortunately, she did not seem to have a first aid box. However, Eleanor still searched under the cabinet. Mommy, what are you looking for? Flynn asked with a frown on his little face. Looking for a first aid box. I don't know if your grandfather has prepared it, Eleanor said as she rummaged through the cabinets. Adrian behind her had a cold look on his face. He had a feeling that she was not prepared. He turned around and walked towards the door. Flynn followed mommy to search and did not notice his daddy leaving. Eleanor was lying in front of a cabinet and carefully flipping through the things inside. Suddenly, someone placed a medicine box on the ground beside her. He kicked the medicine box in front of her. Flynn, where did you find it? Eleanor immediately looked up in joy. When she saw it, she was stunned for a few seconds. It was not her son, but Adrian standing in front of the medicine box. Mommy, this is daddy's medicine box. Hurry up and apply the medicine. Eleanor did not care whose medicine box it was. She picked up the medicine box and placed it in front of the sofa. Then she gently lifted her pants. Under her left knee, there was a patch of bluish red blood clearly visible. Mommy, how did you fall? How did you get injured on your face and legs? Flynn was so curious and worried. Could it be that mommy fell and rolled a few times on the ground? Eleanor took the ointment and applied a little bit of it on her leg. She was going to ignore it. At this time, the man beside her could not take it anymore. Did this woman think that she could just apply a layer of medicine on the surface? Did she have any medical knowledge? If she did not rub the swelling on her skin that had accumulated heat and blood, it would not have any effect at all. Flynn, step aside. Adrian leaned in front of Eleanor and said in a low voice. Flynn moved out of the way. Eleanor saw him approach and asked nervously, What are you doing? Adrian crouched down. His big palm held her calf gently and then looked into her eyes. A smirk formed on his lips. He used his palm to press the spot where her skin was purple now and rubbed it hard. It hurts. It hurts. Adrian, please be gentle. It hurts. Eleanor's eyes turned red from the pain. Even if this man wanted to help her, could he be gentle? She was about to faint from the pain after being rubbed by him so hard. Adrian ordered coldly, bear with it. Eleanor wanted to endure, but she could not. This kind of pain was already beyond her tolerance. She grabbed his hand with all her force. Adrian's pitch black eyes instantly became even darker as he stared. Was this woman crying out of pain or was she giving him some kind of hint? Eleanor broke out in a cold sweat from the pain. Adrian could only push his son away. Flynn, go to my house. Don't come here without my order. Why? Flynn opened his big, ignorant eyes. Be good, Adrian ordered his son. Okay. Flynn pushed the door open. Eleanor felt that the place where she was injured was as hot as fire. She whimpered in pain. From time to time, she let out a few low cries, like the cries of an injured little animal. Why did you ask Flynn to leave? Eleanor did not understand what this man was doing. I just don't want my son to hear you shout, Adrian answered in a low voice. Why? Eleanor was puzzled. Because your screams sound like moans to me. Adrian didn't mind reminding her. Eleanor's small face was already red enough. She was a little angry as she struggled to rid her calf out of his palm. She said unhappily, All right, don't rub it anymore. 
Adrian put the bottle back into the medicine box, picked it up, and left. He entered his room through the door. Eleanor took a long breath, then walked into the bathroom while limping. She looked at the few red scratches on her face in the mirror. She reached out to wash her face with cold water, then used a comb to remove the grass on her hair. She went back to her room and changed into a new set of clothes. When she was all done, it was already past Flynn's bedtime. Suddenly, the door was pushed open again. Flynn walked in front of her with a worried face. Mommy, do you still feel pain? I'm much better now. I'm fine. I just fell. I'll be careful next time. Eleanor consoled her little boy. Yes, you must be careful. If it's too dark, I'll get a small flashlight for you and put it in your bag. You can use it when you come back at night. Flynn was very worried about mommy's safety. Eleanor pursed her lips and smiled. Her eyes were gentle and moved as she looked at her son. Don't worry, mommy will come back early in the future. Hurry up and sleep. You still have to go to school tomorrow. Mommy, you should also sleep earlier, Flynn reminded her and then left through the door. Before entering the door, he said to her, Good night, mommy. Good night. Eleanor smiled and waved her hand. Flynn closed the door. Now that she was alone, the day's events came rushing to her. Eleanor was so agitated that she wanted to find someone to settle the score. This person was Mr. Rockstone. He was fine. Why didn't he marry Kendra? He even caused her this kind of trouble. However, she did not want to cause any more trouble. What if she told him that Kendra was causing trouble for her and he went to look for her again? That night... Kendra also went home with her hair disheveled. Melissa looked and felt her heart ache. She hurriedly asked who hit her. Of course, Kendra told her the truth. There was still a slap mark on her face. Melissa's hatred towards Eleanor became even stronger. Eleanor, I will definitely not let you go, Melissa swore with hatred. George had been working late recently. If he knew that his two daughters were fighting, he wouldn't know what to do. Early in the morning... Adrian dressed Flynn and sent him downstairs. When they passed by the parking lot, Flynn immediately looked for Mommy's car. He wanted to know how Mommy fell. When he saw this, he was immediately stunned. He pointed at Eleanor's new driveway. Daddy, look, my Mommy's window was smashed. Adrian squinted his eyes and looked over. Sure enough, he saw that Eleanor's red Porsche had a broken window. Moreover, there were many dents on the car's body. It seemed like it was little more than an innocent fall last night. It's fine. It's probably because someone accidentally smashed the wrong car. Adrian did not wish for his son to be too worried. Daddy, can you help Mommy repair the car? Flynn looked up at him and begged. Mommy would not be able to handle such a thing. Adrian did not want to involve himself with Eleanor even more than he already was. However... His son's clear and expectant eyes made him unable to refuse. He thought about it and agreed. Okay, I'll find someone to repair it for her. Thank you, Daddy. Mommy will be very touched if she knows. Flynn immediately said with a smile. Adrian frowned. He was doing this for his son's sake. He didn't need this woman's gratitude, but he really wanted to know what had happened last night. After sending Flynn back to school... Adrian saw a surveillance camera near her car. He walked straight to the residential complex. Adrian was famous in this sector. Because of his identity as the CEO of the Miller Corporation, and because he bought three houses, he had become the talk of the complex. Even the property owner was respectful to him. If he wanted to watch the video from last night, the property owner certainly wouldn't dare to refuse. He sat in the security room. The security guard pulled out the video from the parking lot from last night. He saw that Eleanor was arguing with a girl. She slapped the girl first, and then the girl went crazy and pounced on her. The two of them were fighting on the grass like literal cats. Adrian narrowed his eyes and enjoyed the exciting fight. After that, Eleanor left. The girl who fought with her found a rock and smashed her car. Adrian leaned back in his chair after watching the clip. Who was this girl and what kind of grudge did she have with Eleanor? He was actually a little curious. He realized that he really didn't know this woman at all. He wanted to find out about this girl and the reason behind this fight. Eleanor slept until 8 in the morning. When she woke up, the pain in her body reminded her of the fight last night. 
Thinking about Kendra smashing her car, she was full of regret. Not for that awful woman, but for her pretty red car. She quickly changed into a pair of jeans to go see her car in the daylight. She was bent over her car to check the damage. Suddenly, she felt a pair of eyes on her back. Eleanor turned on her heels slowly and looked around when her gaze settled on a pair of cold black eyes staring right at her. Adrian stood in front of Eleanor, tall and mighty. She blinked her eyes and asked, Did you send Flynn to school? Why did you fight last night? Adrian stared at her and asked. Eleanor's face turned hot and she did not admit it. Who said I fought? What are you talking about? I just came back from the surveillance room. Do you need me to show you the video of last night? Adrian snorted. This woman still refused to admit it. Eleanor's face turned red. She bit her lips and said, This is my problem. It has nothing to do with you. Indeed, it has nothing to do with me. If you were not my son's mother, I would not interfere. But you are my son's mother. I want to know the truth. Adrian stared at her. Why? Eleanor narrowed her eyes. Because I don't want my son's mother to be in any kind of danger, Adrian pointed out, clearing his throat. Eleanor folded her arms and bit her lower lip. You don't need to worry. I can keep me and my son safe. You better tell the truth, Adrian ordered. In the video, she was the one who attacked first. Eleanor really did not want to talk about what happened last night. But this man was so uptight. It was as if she did not say anything and it would offend him. She said with a straight face, The one who fought with me last night was my half-sister. Do I need to report to you when I teach my sister a lesson? Adrian's brows were tightly knitted. Did she hit her half-sister last night? Do you still want this car? Adrian raised his eyebrows and asked. Eleanor immediately replied, Of course I want it. I want to call the insurance company now and see how to fix it. I will get someone to come over and fix it for you. Adrian walked to a black Maybach sports car parked in front of him. He sat in the car and drove past Eleanor. Eleanor was taken aback. She was sure this was not concern that he was showing towards her. Why did he care? Would he really repair it for her? Actually, Eleanor also felt that it was very troublesome to look for an insurance company. Furthermore, she was going to rehearse the music today. She narrowed her eyes. Was what this man said true? Would he really help her fix it? Whatever, she could not drive today. She went home and changed into a new set of clothes. She took a taxi and left. Not long after she left, a tow truck came over and pulled her car away. It was sent to a luxury car repair factory. In the afternoon, a black car followed a white off-road vehicle and drove in. The man who got out of the white off-road vehicle was obviously from the estate agency. A calm and elegant man stepped out of the high-end black car. He was dressed in a business suit and had a pair of sunglasses on. He raised his head and looked at the high-end luxury apartment on the 28th floor. He pursed his lips and smiled. Mr. Rockstone, this is a very good residential area in the vicinity. There is a kindergarten nearby. It will take 10 minutes to reach the best hospital in the city center. The transportation is convenient. The residential area is full of greenery. The floor is 200 meters away. The lighting is very good. It is a good source of housing. You must not miss it, the agent explained. Is the 24th floor really gone? If you want that floor, it is really gone. But on the 25th floor, we have an apartment available. Let me lead you up to take a look. Okay. He could not ask for more. The agent brought Adrian Rockstone into the elevator, but he still pressed the button for the 24th floor. The estate agent was a little surprised, but he did not say anything. When they reached the floor, he walked out and looked at the spacious floor. He turned to the estate agent and said, can you talk to the owner here? I'm willing to pay three times the price. I'm sorry, I really can't. Do you know what? Although it's four apartments, only two real owners live here. One of the owners bought all three apartments and turned them into a suite. It's said that the owner is a super rich man. Oh, why did he turn all three apartments into one? Adrian asked. I'm not too sure about that. The agent shrugged. A flash of surprise appeared in his eyes. He looked at one of the doors. It was Eleanor's house. 
The other door on the opposite side of her door must be the owner who combined the three apartments. All right, let's go see the one upstairs. After Adrian said that to the estate agent, he stared at Eleanor's door. He sighed and followed the agent into the elevator. Adrian only took a quick glance and decided to buy the house. He frowned at the furniture. It did not meet his standards. He decided to furnish the apartment again. He had to move in as soon as possible. Eleanor was rehearsing. Maya's voice was ethereal and full of emotions. It was full of sadness. The accompaniment of the piano, coupled with her charming voice, made people entranced. After the end of the song, Maya praised Eleanor. Your piano skills are really good. I believe that this concert will be very successful. Eleanor smiled and said, You will definitely succeed. There is still a week. When your friends come to the concert, I will give you a few seats in the front row for free, Maya exclaimed. Thank you. Can you give me two? Eleanor asked with a smile. Of course. Who do you want to come? Maya asked. I'll ask my son to come. Eleanor also hoped that her son would come and appreciate her performance. The reason she wanted two tickets was because she wanted his father to bring her son. Her son was so young, he must be accompanied by adults. This time, it ended early. Eleanor took Maya's two tickets and left around five in the evening. She took a taxi home and knew that her son had already been brought back. She looked at the parking area and saw that her car had been dragged away. It seemed like Adrian had really helped her repair the car. She remembered his kindness. In the future, if he needed any help, she could return the favor to him. With this man, she hoped to draw a clear line between herself and him so as to avoid entanglement. Eleanor returned home, but her son did not come back. She walked to Adrian's door and pulled it tightly. She knocked a few times, but he did not answer. He must not have come back yet. Eleanor was a little resentful. Why did she not have the authority to enter this door? Adrian was too confident. Does he think that all women would fall at his feet? She bit her lips. At this moment, she heard the doorbell ring. She thought that her son must have come back. However, who she saw outside the door was not her son or Adrian Miller. It was the man she did not want to ever see again. Ian? Eleanor looked at him in confusion. Adrian Rockstone pursed his lips and smiled. It's been a while since you called me by that name, so you really live here. Eleanor was caught off guard. She used to call him Ian when they were dating and were engaged to be married. That was a name that was only hers. Only she called him that. Eleanor was a little angry and asked, Do you need something from me? Nothing. I just wanted to come over and say hello to you. Adrian did not want to scare her. He said to her, Can I come to your house to have a cup of tea? I don't have any tea, she replied. Of course, Eleanor would not let him in. There were still some scratches on her face. She covered it with powder. Adrian looked at her cautious expression and felt a little disappointed. He said gently, Eleanor, don't worry. I will never hurt you or do anything to you. Even if I like you, I will not do anything to you. I am a gentleman too, and I will respect you. Eleanor could not stand his gentle and harmless expression. She bit her lips and did not say anything for a while. Just then, Flynn came and stood there with wide eyes holding his father's hand. Flynn did not expect a man to be showing his love to Mommy. He quickly raised his head to look at Daddy, wanting to see what expression Daddy had. However, Adrian Miller's face was expressionless and his eyes were cold. He led Flynn towards his door. Eleanor heard the sound of footsteps. She quickly stuck her head out and looked into the corridor. When Ian saw her looking into the corridor, he also turned around and saw a man and a little kid. When he took a closer look at the man's face, his gaze was deeply shaken for a few seconds. This man was Adrian Miller. Adrian also recognized him. The Rockstone family was also very famous in the business world. At this moment, a tender voice called out to Eleanor, Mommy, who is this? Eleanor looked at her son and then at her ex-fiance. He is no one. Come over for dinner later. Yes, I will come with Daddy. Mommy, thank you for making dinner for Daddy and me. The little kid was young, but he already had a plan. He wanted the man who showed his love to Mommy to hear that Daddy was beside him. 
it would be best if he did not show his love to his mother. Adrian led his son into the room and slammed the door with a bang. Eleanor could not help but be shocked. At this moment, Ian turned his head in shock and looked at Eleanor. That child just now was your son? Yes, Eleanor lightly replied. Is he Mr. Miller's child? The man you cheated on me with was Adrian Miller? Ian's handsome face instantly revealed pain and unwillingness. He never thought that Eleanor would give birth to a child. It was Adrian Miller's child. Ian was also a very powerful person in the business world. However, compared to the Miller Group's empire, the Rockstone Group was nothing. Therefore, at this moment, he was taken aback. There was a man beside Eleanor, the only man he could not compare to. No wonder Eleanor broke off the engagement back then. It turned out that she had a business giant by her side. Eleanor only wanted Ian to stop pestering her. She could only admit it. Yes, you saw it. He and I already have a son. You should give up now, right? Ian's heart was ruthlessly stabbed. He panted a few times and shook his head. No, I believe this is just an accident, Eleanor. Whether there are other men with you or not, I will wait for you. You are crazy, Ian. I do not need you now. Eleanor was so anxious that she said vicious words. Ian did not believe her. He bit his lip and said, I was the one who let you down five years ago. Now, even if you do not need me, I will be with you until I see you find your happiness. Besides, it's not all over, Eleanor. See, you still call me Ian. You know it's a name only you own. Eleanor sighed. That's because Flynn's father is also called Adrian. I just can't call you that anymore. That's the only reason. Ian is just a name of convenience. Ian shook his head. He then took a deep breath and announced with a low voice, I will live upstairs. From now on, we will be neighbors living in the same building. I also don't want to be called what you call that man. Besides, Ian is something we share, so it's all good. What? Eleanor's eyes widened in shock. Ian also moved here? Now there was an Adrian Miller who was insufferable and the father of her son, and an Adrian Rockstone, her ex-fiancé, her half-sister's ex-fiancé, and the man she once loved the most. Destiny was playing a ridiculous game with her. Eleanor was shocked out of her wits. Her ex-fiancé was coming to live in the same building as her, the same building where her son's father also lived. Things were getting more chaotic as days went by. She grabbed onto her doorframe to regain her balance. Every minute, she was reminded of the confusion which led to all of these things in the first place. This name, Adrian, was the reason for this mess and now it was suffocating her. Ian stood in front of her with his hands in his pockets. He was suddenly eager to prove something. He looked at her and said, You told me that five years ago was just an accident. I believe that the relationship between you and Adrian is like the relationship between Kendra and me. It was an accident and a mistake. Eleanor, I want you to know that I will not give up on you. After saying that, he strode towards the elevator leaving the shocked Eleanor with a blank face. In the end, she smiled bitterly. Ian's persistence no longer moved her, but only gave her a kind of pressure. Was it not good for them to live their lives independently and move on? Eleanor had just walked into the hall when she heard her phone ring. She picked it up and saw that it was Adrian calling. She frowned. There was only one door between them. Why did this man call her? Didn't he think the phone bill was expensive? Could it be her son calling? Hey! Eleanor picked it up. Make dinner before seven, Adrian ordered her coldly and hung up the phone. Eleanor looked at the phone that was hung up. She exhaled. She felt as if she had upset him somehow. Was her existence a problem for him? What was his deal? This morning he had helped her, and now he was ordering her around. In Adrian's hall, Flynn moved a chair to look at the situation through the peephole as soon as he entered the room. At this moment, he climbed down from the chair and said happily to the man who was watching the news with an iPad on the sofa, Daddy, that man is gone. Yes, Adrian said. He looked at the iPad and nodded. Flynn also heaved a sigh of relief. He secretly glanced at Daddy's face. Was Daddy really not jealous at all? That man just now was also very tall and handsome. Furthermore, he showed his affection to Mommy. Could it be that his father was not angry at all? 
At this moment, Adrian was looking at a piece of news from five years ago. It was an outdated rumor. The marriage between the Rockstone and Greenwich families had failed. The bride had broken off the marriage. In addition, there were a few pictures of Adrian Rockstone and Eleanor from five years ago. The two of them were holding hands and were smiling ear to ear. It turned out that this woman's ex-boyfriend was Adrian Rockstone. No wonder they were still entangled with each other. Adrian also knew that Mr. Rockstone had just canceled his engagement with another girl from the Greenwich family. That girl was Eleanor's half-sister, Kendra. This meant that Eleanor and Kendra had fought downstairs last night because of this man. For the first time in his life, he was annoyed by his own name. He didn't usually care about these things, but the fact that he shared a name with Eleanor's ex, or rather the fact that this Rockstone guy shared a name with him, bothered him to no end. Adrian's brows furrowed slightly. The Rockstone hotels were spread all over the world, and they were the leader in the luxury hotel industry. In recent years, Adrian Rockstone had already taken over the inheritance rights. The market value seemed to have risen again. His value had already squeezed into the top 10 of the global billionaire list. Adrian was not interested in this kind of superficial ranking. However, his name would be listed at the top of the list every year without a doubt. For those who produced the list, they could only see a portion of his family's assets. It was impossible for them to list the specific wealth and market value in his hands. Adrian recalled how this man was all over Eleanor in the hallway. If she married him in the future, would his son call this man his father too? Thinking about this, Adrian felt a strong sense of rejection and dissatisfaction in his heart. For the first time, he felt his heart was heavy with unwanted emotions he did not want to label. In the kitchen, Eleanor was cooking dinner. Ian's appearance had indeed disturbed her mind. He had moved upstairs. If Kendra found out, she would flip out. She hoped that Ian would quickly move away and not bring her any trouble. Eleanor was lost in thought as she cooked. In the blink of an eye, it was seven in the evening. Adrian punctually brought his son in through that door. When he saw that there were only two dishes on the table and Eleanor was still cooking in the kitchen, his expression suddenly sank. This woman had not finished cooking yet. She must be thinking about that fiancé of hers. Flynn did not realize that Daddy was angry. He let go of Daddy's hand and ran into the kitchen to hug Eleanor from behind. Eleanor smiled and pulled him closer. All right, stand back. Mom is near the stove. Mommy, who was that man? Why did he talk to you? Flynn inquired. Eleanor replied while cooking, He is just a friend of mine. Mommy, you cannot like this man. Daddy is much more handsome than him. Flynn was afraid that Mommy would be attracted to the strange man because he could see that the man was also a very handsome person. Eleanor smiled and glanced at him. Liking people does not only depend on their appearance. Sometimes the heart is more important than their appearance. At this time, a cold question came from the kitchen door. What do you mean? Eleanor was immediately shocked. Adrian was here too. None of your business. I'm just teaching my son how to differentiate good from bad. Eleanor replied nonchalantly. Adrian thought that this woman was implying that he was not a good person. She was trying to belittle him. Did she mean that the Rockstone guy had a better heart? He scoffed. Eleanor turned to Flynn and said, Get out of here. The smell of oil and smoke here is too strong. Eleanor cleaned the kitchen and plated the food she had made. She brought the plate out and placed it on the table. At the same time, she used a pair of mittens to bring a pot of chicken soup to the table and brought out the salad. Adrian and Flynn sat at the table. His cold eyes looked at her with obvious displeasure. He warned her, make sure the dinner is ready by seven. If you starve my son, I will deduct the money. Eleanor also felt sorry for her son. She had just finished cooking dinner so late. He must be starving but she did not back off. He is my son too, and just because you pay me does not mean you can order me around. Daddy, I am not hungry. I ate a lot of food in the afternoon at school. Don't blame mommy. Flynn tried to cool off the atmosphere. Okay, I will try to cook as early as possible in the future, Eleanor replied and served her son. When she was about to serve herself, Adrian handed her his plate. 
Eleanor rolled her eyes but took it and filled it with food. After sitting down to eat, Flynn immediately reported, Mommy, your car was broken last night. Daddy helped you repair it. Yes, I know. Eleanor lowered her head and replied. Daddy treated you very well, right? Flynn asked with a smile. Eleanor looked at the man. He was eating elegantly. She said vaguely, thank you. Adrian glanced at her but did not respond. Flynn secretly looked at Daddy and then answered for Daddy. Daddy said, you are welcome. This is what he should do. Eleanor was a little amused and raised a brow. This man's expression clearly did not show that. His face was as cold and he just looked mad at something that he had no idea about. Any woman who lived with such a man would definitely find it meaningless in a few days. How he got women to be at his beck and call was beyond her. Adrian, on the other hand, was in a bad mood. He did not know why. Today was like any other day. Business was grand and his son loved him. He did not care about this woman in front of him, but somehow everything about her affected him in a way he did not appreciate. Dinner was in full swing at Eleanor's place, and the father-son duo ate in peace. After the meal, Eleanor looked at Flynn watching cartoons. Adrian went back to his room. Eleanor sat beside her son and asked him about the situation at school. Flynn answered truthfully. He was very used to school life. Eleanor suddenly thought of something. She looked at her son seriously and asked, Flynn, mommy will have a concert in a week. Do you want to see it? Yes. Will Aunt Valerie go? Flynn immediately thought that he would go to such a concert with his godmother. She really wants to go and watch it. Unfortunately, she is busy with filming and can't leave. I have two tickets. I hope someone will accompany you to watch it. Eleanor did not want to name him. However, Flynn immediately thought of it. Then I can ask Daddy to accompany me to see it. This was precisely the answer Eleanor wanted. She pretended to be worried and said, Maybe he doesn't have time. I'll go and ask him. He will definitely take me to see it. Flynn was very confident that Daddy loved him very much. Eleanor immediately nodded and said, Okay, go and ask him first. If he is willing to take you there, I will give you the tickets. Mommy, can I sleep with Daddy tonight? Flynn asked. Yes. Eleanor did not restrict her son anymore. The blood relationship was not something she could stop. Adrian was working in front of a luxurious desk in front of the French window in his room. His slender fingers were tapping on the keyboard of his laptop. Flynn also quietly did not disturb him. However, Adrian quickly put down the work in his hands and got up to call him. Son, go take a bath. Yes. Okay. Flynn nodded obediently and followed Daddy into the bathroom. Sitting in the large bathtub, Flynn's hair was covered with foam, revealing a cute little face. The sparkling foam made his big eyes shine brightly, as if they were reflecting the stars in the sky. Adrian looked at him lovingly and splashed some water on him, making him laugh. Flynn took advantage of Daddy's good mood and said with a smile, Daddy, my mommy is having a concert. I want to see it. Will you come with me? She has two tickets. Adrian frowned. When? A week later, Flynn replied, I'll see if I have time. I'll go with you when I get free. Adrian tried to convince his son without making a commitment. Daddy, I really want to go, Flynn said. You have to come with me. He looked imploring. He thought mommy would be very beautiful when she played on stage that day. He must drag daddy to see it. He must not miss out on mommy's most beautiful moment. Adrian thought for a moment and nodded. All right, I will go with you. Yes, that's great. Flynn stood up excitedly. Adrian immediately held him. Don't stand up. Be careful not to catch a cold. Flynn pinched his nose. His face went back into the water. His short black hair was washed very cleanly and cutely. It made people want to pinch his face. Adrian was spending all his time with his son at night. He really enjoyed these moments. At night, he put Flynn on the big bed and watched him sleep by his side. This was the most proud and successful time he had ever had in 27 years. Early the next morning, when Eleanor woke up, the sun was already high in the sky. She pulled her long hair back in frustration. Now Adrian would send her son to school she was getting lazier and lazier. It was getting closer and closer to the concert. Maya's rehearsals were also very tight. 
Now that she had to go to the venue every day, Eleanor did not want to ruin her concert, so she would not miss the rehearsals. The tickets for the concert had been released three months ago, and the buying rate was very high. Maya was a popular singer, and she had held many concerts so far. Last time, her concert had a very good buying rate. This time, with the initial publicity, it made people look forward to it. Greenwich Mansion. After Kendra was revoked by Ian, she had a fight with Eleanor, but still did not let go of the hatred in her heart. She had not given up on Ian. After she calmed down and thought about the pain, she decided to continue chasing after him until he agreed to be engaged with her again. She knew that on that night five years ago, Ian wanted to be responsible for her. Kendra finished dressing early this morning and drove to Ian's office. She was already his girlfriend and no one dared to stop her when she came there. Kendra had just taken the elevator from the lobby. When she got out of the elevator, she walked in the direction of the main office. However, very quickly, a female assistant stopped her with a smile. Miss Greenwich, I'm sorry Mr. Rockstone hasn't come to the company yet. I usually treat you well, right? Furthermore, I said so many good things about you in front of Adrian. Is this how you repay me? Kendra sneered. Of course, she knew that Ian was in the company. He just did not want to see her. The assistant smiled awkwardly. He is really not here. Is he not here? Don't I have eyes? I'll know when I go in and take a look myself. Kendra flung her long hair and ignored his assistant's obstruction. She went straight to Ian's office. The assistant behind her had a helpless expression. She knew that she could not stop Kendra. Kendra walked to Ian's office door and knocked on it. She pushed open the door and entered. In front of the bright and spacious, luxurious office desk, Ian was signing the documents sent in the morning. He raised his head and looked at the girl who walked in. He sighed and closed his eyes. Why are you here? Ian's voice was gentle. Kendra loved his gentleness. He had money and power. At the same time, he was also very kind and affectionate. He did not have the air of a young businessman and rarely lost his temper. Kendra looked at him with a pair of pitiful eyes. Her eyes were red. She took a deep breath and said, Baby, I have decided to forgive you for what happened at the engagement banquet. I will not make a fuss about it. I know you are not ready yet. I will wait for you no matter how long it takes. Ian sighed. Don't wait for me. No matter how long you wait, my decision will not change. I don't want to waste your time. I'm willing to waste my time on you. You know how much I love you. In these five years, you have taken care of me. I'm very touched. I won't fall in love with any man other than you. Kendra's eyes were full of sorrow. She fell in love with him when she was 16. At that time, he and Eleanor were very good friends. She was so jealous that she almost went crazy. His handsome face showed determination. I'm sorry, I will treat you as a friend, but I will never treat you as my lover. After saying that, he stood up and prepared to leave. When he passed by Kendra, she immediately hugged him from the back. But I love you. I don't want to be your friend. I just want to be your lover. Don't be willful. You've already wasted five years on me. You can't waste your time anymore. Ian reached out and pulled her hand away. He turned around. There was no emotion in his eyes. Kendra's heart was broken. Her heart had been broken once at the engagement party and had not recovered yet. Now she heard her heart break again. Why? Why do you hate me so much? Is it because Eleanor came back and you fell in love with her? Kendra asked with a face full of hatred. Ian felt a headache and touched his forehead. Don't ask me anything. I can't answer. This is my own matter. It has nothing to do with anyone. It's her. It must be her. I know it's her. How did Eleanor confuse you? You didn't miss her for five years. The moment she came back, you fell in love with her. At this moment, Kendra had the urge to tear Eleanor apart with her own hands. Ian pursed his lips and looked at her but did not want to say anything. He turned around and said, I have to go. You should also go back. Kendra followed him out. Ian walked into the elevator and she also quickly followed him in like sticky candy that could not be thrown off. He looked at her and felt a headache. He sighed. Why are you following me? I love you. I don't care if you are willing or not. I will not leave you. 
she cried. He felt a little helpless. The elevator had just reached the first floor of the garage when Kendra saw him suddenly press the button back to the floor of the office. She asked in surprise, Are you not going out? I have a meeting that is about to start. Ian originally planned to choose new furniture to move into the new suite, but now that Kendra was here, he did not want her to find out that he and Eleanor lived in the same building. Kendra immediately felt that he clearly wanted to avoid her, so she was angry and helpless. Ian directly called his subordinates for a meeting while Kendra sat in the waiting room. She planned to keep pestering him. However, after 10 minutes or so, Kendra decided to go and see if Ian had finished his meeting. Ian's assistant came over and told her that Ian had left. Kendra was so angry that she stomped her feet and said angrily, Adrian Rockstone, you cannot treat me like this. I will not let her win. I will not let you two get back together. This is a promise. Eleanor was rehearsing all day in an effort to give her 100% to the concert. After she was done, Maya handed her a bottle of water and said to her, Eleanor, I plan to put your photo on my promotional website. You are so outstanding and should not be unknown. Eleanor looked at her happily. Really? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Valerie and I have been good friends for many years and you are her good friend. We should help each other. Besides, your skills speak for themselves. Maya sincerely praised. In a while, we will go and choose your evening dress. That is specially sponsored by the high-end custom-made store for us. You can choose any evening dress you want, and then we'll choose a dress to shoot promotional photos in the afternoon. Tomorrow, I will make a new promotional website and put your photos on it. Maya explained. Okay, Eleanor pursed her lips and smiled. She was also looking forward to this performance. At noon, she had lunch with Maya and a group of staff outside. She arrived at a high-end tailor-made dress store. Eleanor chose a pink slip dress for the shoot. It was light and graceful, and then she chose a wine-red gown and black stilettos as performance attire. There were three songs that needed Eleanor's accompaniment. Maya carefully selected the songs for her. The shooting in the afternoon was very successful. Eleanor herself had the beauty of art. Coupled with her classical and delicate facial features, the promotional photos taken were very attractive. Eleanor was busy until around four in the afternoon when she finished her work and went home. On the way, all she could think about was her son, and she wanted to bring him home as soon as possible. She could not help but ask the taxi driver to speed up a little. When she reached the school gate, she saw many parents picking up their children. Eleanor quickly walked towards the school. Before she entered the school, she saw a familiar man. Adrian actually came to pick up his son every day. This made her a little surprised. Shouldn't a businessman like him be very busy? Mommy. Flynn noticed her with his sharp eyes. He pulled Daddy's hand away and ran towards her. Eleanor held him in her arms and kissed his tender little face. Did you miss me? Yes! Flynn exclaimed with excitement. I came out in a hurry this morning and haven't bought any vegetables yet. Come with me to the supermarket later, Eleanor said to her son. Okay. Flynn looked at his daddy next to him and said, Daddy, you can come with me. Adrian thought for a moment. Okay. Eleanor did not want him to go with her. She wanted to go to the supermarket with her son. With this man around, it was as if an invisible pressure was pressing on her. However, she agreed. It would not be good if she refused. These days, she just could not spend any time alone with her son. This man was everywhere. Not far from the school, there was a large shopping mall. At this time, they did not need to drive. They could reach their destination by walking to a nearby bridge. Flynn jumped up and down in front of them, being the happy and jolly kid he was. When he went up the stairs, he held Eleanor's hand with one hand and Adrian's with the other, indicating that the family was tightly connected. This was his dream, his own little family. Many parents who picked up the children from school cast a sidelong glance at Flynn. They were amazed by the family's beauty and wealth. The three looked like they were off of a magazine cover. When they arrived at the shopping mall, Eleanor felt that Flynn could use some shopping. It was still early, so she decided to walk around the children's clothing store. Flynn liked the toys placed in the store, so Adrian followed them in so he could pay for his son's stuff. 
Eleanor did not look at the prices this time. She only chose the clothes that suited her son. As soon as she entered the shop, she was attracted by a cute princess dress. She touched the fabric with her hands and looked at the perfectly designed dress for a little girl. She secretly sighed. She wanted a little daughter, too. Mommy, if you like it, you can have it another day. You can have another daughter with Daddy. I would like a sister, too, Flynn innocently said. Eleanor blushed and pulled her hand back. Who said I wanted to have another child? I have you. Furthermore, even if she wanted to have a child in the future, she would definitely not have another child with this man. Adrian narrowed his eyes and did not say anything. Even when he didn't want to, his eyes automatically shifted towards Eleanor, and he let his eyes linger for a minute. Eleanor picked out three sets of clothes for her son. When she went to pay, she found the black card in her wallet. She took it out and handed it to the cashier. After she swiped the card, Eleanor put the clothes away and then led her son to the supermarket. She took the empty cart and placed Flynn inside. He really enjoyed it. Eleanor smiled at his cute little happy face. Adrian pushed the shopping cart behind her while Eleanor chose the food in the vegetable area. Adrian rarely visited the supermarket. He watched her pick the food and look at it. In his eyes, it was just the same food, but this woman still had to hesitate for a few seconds. However, he had the patience to wait for her. All the women around him were staring at him, but he had eyes only for her. Even though he looked bored, he could not take his eyes off the woman in front of him. How about we eat fish tonight? Eleanor asked her son. I want to eat shrimp, Flynn demanded. Okay then, we will buy some fresh ones and go back. Eleanor went to the seafood area and fished out a pack of shrimp. Eleanor spent half an hour buying food. She was in charge of getting food while Adrian was in charge of taking care of his son and pushing the shopping cart. It was a tacit understanding. After buying the vegetables, the three of them drove home. Outside the building, a truck was parked on the road next to the residential area. At this moment, four or five strong delivery men were delivering goods. The elevator was also occupied by them. Suddenly, a man walked out from behind. Eleanor turned her head when she was waiting for the elevator and saw him. Her heart skipped a beat. It was Ian. Ian also saw the three of them. He looked at Eleanor with a gentle gaze. I moved today. When I'm done packing, come and have a cup of tea when you have time. After saying that, he greeted Adrian politely. Hello, Mr. Miller. Adrian frowned and asked coldly, Do you live here? I live on the 25th floor of your building. He then looked at Eleanor with deep affection. We will be neighbors from now on. Adrian's handsome face turned darker for some reason. His features hardened and his hands balled up into fists. How could Eleanor be okay with her ex fiance living in her building? You are my mommy's friend? Flynn looked at Ian warily. Ian gave Flynn a gentle smile. Yes, he said. My name is Adrian Rockstone. I have been a friend of your mommy for many years. At this time, the elevator beside them came down. Eleanor was the first to step in. Behind her, Adrian led his son in as well. Ian also took the elevator. Immediately, two handsome men who were equally matched stood side by side in the elevator. Not only did they share a name, but also an energy of authority. Eleanor stood behind Flynn, and her gaze couldn't help but reveal a trace of sadness as she looked at Ian's figure. Eleanor was suddenly flooded with a million memories. She had never thought she would be in this situation, that this man would one day become a stranger. Just when her eyes were twinkling like stars and were enveloped by memories, Adrian turned his head and coldly stared at her. Eleanor immediately lowered her eyes in panic. Adrian took a deep breath, but his perfect jaw instantly clenched. The elevator stopped on the 24th floor. Adrian led Flynn out first. When Eleanor walked out behind him, she could clearly feel Ian's eyes looking at her. When the elevator door closed, a hint of reluctance flashed across Ian's eyes. Adrian led his son to the door. He opened his fingerprint lock and pushed the door open. He said to Flynn, Come in. But I want to help mommy cook, Flynn said on a whim. No need. You will only get in the way. She can handle it alone, Adrian said coldly. His tone was devoid of emotion. Eleanor was a little upset. 
It was good that her son was willing to help her, but did this man have to be so heartless? Flynn, go and play for a while. Mommy will cook for you very soon. Eleanor smiled and patted his little head. She opened her door and went in. Flynn walked into Daddy's room. He looked up and said to his father, Daddy, how about you play the piano and let Mommy cook while listening to the piano? This way she will be very happy. I don't have time. Adrian shook his head. Then I'll go play. Flynn could only do it himself. His daddy was not even trying to impress his mommy. Eleanor was washing the vegetables in her kitchen when she heard the sound of the piano. She immediately knew that her son was practicing the piano. She pursed her lips and smiled. As expected, she was in a better mood. In an aristocratic residential area, Kendra's car stopped in front of Ian's old residence. Kendra could not stop him in the company. She thought that he would have gone home, but at this moment, the door was tightly shut. In the past, she could go in. Now that the password was changed, she could only wait. She kept pressing the doorbell, but no one opened the door. She did not give up and ran to the security guard to ask. The security guard knew Ian. He told Kendra that he had not come back there for a few days now. Kendra sat in the car with her eyes closed, gritting her teeth. Did Ian move out of his house too? Was it to avoid her? Kendra was so angry that she hit the steering wheel hard. It was all Eleanor. Now that she could not even find Ian, where would she go? The wheels in her head were moving fast. She had to find a way out to get rid of this problem of a woman who appeared out of nowhere and took away her everything. Eleanor and Adrian were in the car, and the tension was so thick between them that it could be cut with a knife. 20 minutes later, they finally arrived. Eleanor thanked him, thank you, I'll get off by the road. Adrian's car drove into the side of the road and stopped. Eleanor got out of the car. Once she left the sports car, the smile at the corner of her mouth disappeared for a second. Then she turned around and ran into a big hall. It was getting closer and closer to the performance time. All the staff and band members were tense. The rehearsals were also very important. There was absolutely no sign of carelessness. After the afternoon training, Maya had urgent matters to attend to. She had reserved the afternoon time. However, Maya had a few new songs. She planned to play the piano accompaniment, so she had to practice as well. Eleanor also had thoughts of composing. However, in recent years, in order to take care of her son, she was unable to get anything done. Now, she had the time. Eleanor had not been to her father's company for a long time. The Greenwich family ran a large metallurgy company, and their annual profits were not bad. Moreover, her father also invested in various aspects every year. They already had a place in the business world. In recent years, Melissa had entered the jewelry world, and the Greenwich family had also started to dabble in many areas of development. It could be said that they were at the peak of their power. However, Eleanor had never asked about the company's matters. Melissa was the one in charge now. She was not willing to be a housewife. In recent years, she had completely taken over the company with her father and was very capable. Ever since Melissa interfered with the management of the company, Eleanor rarely went to the company to look for her father. Eleanor found a coffee shop to eat at. After eating, she took a taxi home to practice the piano. Around three in the afternoon, the door next to her suddenly opened. She was shocked. Her son definitely did not come back so early. Then this person must be Adrian. Without her son present, Eleanor's relationship with this man would inexplicably turn cold. Now she was alone in her apartment with him. She gulped and turned around slowly. Adrian held a car key in his hand and threw it into her arms. I'll give you a car to use first. Your car still needs a few days to get repaired. Eleanor was slightly stunned. Although he spoke coldly, his actions still made Eleanor happy. She picked up the car key and said, Thank you. Adrian wrapped his arms around himself and looked at her coldly. I have a request. You must agree. Tell me. Eleanor looked at him curiously. Stay away from that rockstone guy. Adrian narrowed his eyes and looked at her with a piercing gaze. Eleanor was stunned for a few seconds. Then she asked, why? Because I don't like you being entangled with your old love and affecting my son's life. 
Adrian sounded sarcastic. He averted his gaze and looked everywhere but at her. Eleanor's pretty face suddenly turned red. We have already drawn a clear line between us. I'm not interested in knowing about the matter between you two. In short, I don't want to see you and this man act intimately at the door of the house again, Adrian said. He huffed and shifted on his feet. Eleanor immediately widened her eyes. Which of his eyes saw her getting intimate with Ian? However, she was a little annoyed and asked, He came for me. What can I do? It can only mean that your rejection of him is not obvious enough. Adrian snorted coldly. He did not forget that when she was in the elevator, she was staring at Ian's figure with such affection that it made him nauseous. Eleanor was slightly stunned. She could only sigh, I will talk to him. When Adrian heard this, his handsome face inexplicably darkened for a few seconds. Looks like you still can't forget him. Eleanor said, This is between me and him. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with you. Adrian's handsome face froze. His expression became even more rigid. He opened the door and was about to leave. Well, I'll go pick up my son in the afternoon, Eleanor informed him. However, what responded to her was the sound of the door slamming shut. Eleanor looked away in embarrassment. This man was really difficult to get along with. If he closed the door like this, it would break sooner or later. She put the car keys aside and continued to practice the piano. Maya's concert promotion was displayed on a huge screen in the city center. There was also a place for Eleanor. Although her picture was pushed back, between Maya and the singer invited to the concert, Eleanor's face was clear and elegant, making people notice her at first glance. Ian's car was parked in front of a traffic light not far away. He looked up and was slightly stunned. He picked up his phone and called his assistant. He said in a commanding tone, Buy me a ticket to Maya's concert. I want the front seat. After making the call, Ian looked at Eleanor's face on the screen. He was stunned for a moment. Five years ago, she was as clear as a star. Now her entire body was emitting a confident and charming aura. The more this girl grew up, the more charming she became. She was just so beautiful. How could he ever look at someone else? It was only when the car horn behind him urged him that he realized the light was already green. He stepped on the gas and drove forward. This advertisement was also seen by everyone who knew Eleanor, including Kendra. She looked at the promotional picture on the phone with hatred. Eleanor's figure deeply provoked her eyes. She was raised by her father as a rich family's young lady. The piano was her specialty. However, Kendra herself had been poor ever since she could remember. She never had such opportunities or exposure. It was only when she was 13 that her mother married George Greenwich. As a result, she was extremely jealous of Eleanor and everything she had always had. Now, seeing Eleanor being fortunate enough to attend Maya's concert and become a guest singer, she was both envious and miserable. She suddenly thought of Ian. If she could notice that Eleanor would be attending this concert, Ian would definitely notice it too. Then he would definitely go and watch. Although Kendra really did not want to watch Eleanor's performance, she knew that Ian would definitely go. She might be able to find him. No matter what, Kendra would never let go of him. She knew that Ian would definitely sit in the front row. Therefore, she had to sit in the front row too. She would be there and make sure he knew that he was hers and Eleanor was out of the question for him. At night, Eleanor brought Flynn over and made him a little snack. She watched a movie with him and then they both cuddled on the couch under a soft blanket. Mommy, when you perform on stage this time, will you be dressed very well? Flynn asked curiously. Eleanor smiled. Of course, I will put on some makeup and I have a pretty dress. After all, I'm going to be on stage. Mommy, you must dress up beautifully. Daddy and I will go to see you, Flynn advised. Eleanor sighed. Did her son not give up the idea of matchmaking between her and Adrian? She could only touch his little head. Baby, you just need to remember that no matter what happens, you are the person mommy loves the most. Yes, I know. You are also the person I love the most. Flynn immediately nodded seriously to show that he remembered. Eleanor was washing the vegetables while Flynn was helping to pick the tender vegetables. 
Although his hands were still a little clumsy, he had learned well. He picked through the vegetables very well. Adrian walked into the kitchen and saw this scene. Flynn raised his head and called out with a smile, Daddy! At this moment, Eleanor's phone rang. She quickly wiped her hands and went to the sofa to pick it up. She looked at it and was stunned for a moment before answering. Hello, Dad. Eleanor, I was just around the corner. Did you eat? Come down with Flynn. Let's go out and have dinner together, George said. Dad, we are already cooking, Eleanor replied. You guys are cooking. Then can I come up for a meal? George asked. Eleanor did not dare to refuse. She smiled and said, Okay, Dad, come up. You guys are on the 24th floor, 402, right? George confirmed with her. Yes, Eleanor answered. Good, I'll come up later. George hung up the phone. Eleanor was also a little excited. Her father was coming, but when she looked up, she saw Adrian standing in the house. She was shocked. She did not seem to have told her father that Flynn was this man's son. My father will come for dinner later. Do you want to join us? Eleanor asked for his opinion. Flynn was also very happy. Grandpa is coming for dinner. Yes, he is downstairs. He will come up soon, Eleanor answered him. Adrian narrowed his eyes and said, I won't be staying then. You guys eat. With that, he turned to his son and said, Come over after you are done. Daddy, why don't you eat with us? Flynn asked with big eyes. Daddy still has work to do, Adrian lied to him. In the Greenwich family, he only recognized Flynn as his son. He didn't want anything to do with the people of the Greenwich family. Therefore, he didn't want to see his grandfather. Flynn, since your daddy is busy with his work, let's have dinner with your grandfather, Eleanor said to her son. Okay, daddy, you must remember to eat. Don't be hungry, Flynn reminded Adrian. Yes, he said. Adrian opened the door and entered his apartment. Eleanor suddenly did not want her father to know who Flynn's father was. At the same time, she could tell that Adrian didn't want her father to know that he was Flynn's father either. She wondered when she would be able to live her life like a normal woman who did not have to hide stuff from people and juggle lies. Eleanor prepared the food soon and rang the doorbell to call Adrian and Flynn over for dinner. Her son really liked to eat salt-baked shrimp, and this was also Eleanor's specialty. While eating, she peeled the shrimp for her son and suddenly felt a weird energy in the room. She looked over at Adrian and saw him clutching his fork with so much force that it was a miracle that it didn't break. His entire body was filled with an oppressive coldness. She could not help but frown. Did she offend him again? Thinking carefully, she had not spoken more than three sentences to him since the afternoon until now. What was there to be angry about? Just as she could not figure it out, she saw Flynn eating shrimp happily. He asked, Mommy, why did Mr. Rockstone buy a house upstairs? Were you both very close friends in the past? Eleanor was embarrassed for a few seconds and nodded. Yes, he is a friend I grew up with. You two are very close. Flynn still did not understand the complicated feelings between adults, but he did not like how that man kept looking at his mommy. I used to, but something happened and we got into a fight. Eleanor seriously answered her son's question. What happened? Flynn continued to ask. Eleanor hesitated for a moment. Adrian suddenly said, You broke off the engagement five years ago. Is it related to me? Eleanor dropped her spoon. Her movements froze and she stopped breathing. Her heartbeat slowed down. Did he know that she broke off the engagement five years ago? Did he investigate her past? It has nothing to do with you. Eleanor calmly replied. In fact, it was partially because of him and how she accidentally slept with him that night, just before her engagement. Then, she encountered Ian sleeping together with Kendra. Adrian stared at her coldly. He knew that the matter was related to him, but Eleanor did not admit it. None of them would talk about what happened back then in front of Flynn. Eleanor lowered her head and ate in a dull manner. Flynn looked at Daddy and then at Mommy. He continued to ask, Mommy, have you ever been married to anyone before? No. Eleanor shook her head. She looked at her son with a frown on her face. The man upstairs seems to like you very much, Flynn said with some resentment. Eleanor did not expect Flynn to see through this. She pursed her lips and smiled. Have a good meal. Eat properly and finish all your vegetables. 
Mommy, you can't marry a man other than Daddy. Flynn suddenly gave a domineering order. It seemed like he would end up crying if she didn't agree to this. Eleanor's jaw hung open. What Flynn meant was that she could only marry this Adrian. She did not want to do this. Why was this evening proving to be a nightmare? Why was Arian not saying anything? She could really use a drink right now. Didn't I tell you? I will never get married in my life. Eleanor stared at her son and said. After she finished speaking, she gave Adrian a look of exasperation and continued to eat. Adrian felt her look of disdain and twisted his handsome sword like brows. What? Do you think I'm not good enough for you? He asked. Eleanor did not expect him to continue. She looked up and snorted. It is because I am not good enough for you, she said sarcastically. Adrian's lips curled into a mocking smile. At least you know. Eleanor bit her lips and said to Flynn, Honey, I will not marry him. He doesn't like me, so you do not need to waste your time trying to matchmake us in the future. He is your father and I am your mother, but that is it for us, okay? The smile on Adrian's face disappeared as he stared at Eleanor. Did he say he didn't like her? Who gave her the right to assume? However, her words clearly showed that she did not like him. Flynn pouted his lips. His big eyes were clearly filled with disappointment and a trace of tears. After the meal, Eleanor took two tickets from her bag and handed them to Adrian. I heard you're willing to take him to the concert. Here are your tickets, she said, trying her very best to change the topic. Adrian looked at the tickets in her hands. I don't need them. Don't you plan to take Flynn there? Eleanor was a little disappointed. She wanted her son to see her on stage. I have a better ticket source, Adrian said, and left, but not before staring her down for a good minute. If he could, he would just do something to her. He was so angry, and he didn't even know why. Eleanor was surprised. It seemed that he was going to buy a ticket to enter the venue. Then she could return the two tickets to Maya and ask her to give them to someone else. Adrian seemed to be off today. Even though he was never friendly, at least he was involved with Flynn and his matters. Tonight, he just seemed to be in a different zone. That night, Flynn continued to sleep in his father's apartment. Eleanor was lying on the bed and could not sleep. She looked up at the ceiling. When she thought of Ian moving upstairs, her mind was in a daze. How could she forget a man who had lived in her heart for so long? She was getting better, but now that he was just a floor away, she kept recalling her past with him. Around eight in the morning the next day, Eleanor received a call from Maya. She asked her to go to the rehearsal earlier because she was busy in the afternoon. Of course, Eleanor had to cooperate with her time. She quickly replied, Okay, I'll be right over. Eleanor got up and hurriedly put on a dress. Her long hair was casually combed, and she went out with just some lip gloss and mascara on her face. She looked at the time. It was peak hour for work, and it was not easy to stop a taxi. Eleanor stood on the roadside to stop a taxi. Seeing dozens of taxis rushing past without stopping, she could not help being anxious. She did not know when her car would be repaired. She really needed a car. A black Bentley sedan drove up from the underground parking lot. At the same time, a black Maybach sports car drove out from the parking lot behind her. The two people in the car noticed her at the same time. Adrian saw Ian's car. He stepped on the accelerator and the sports car roared and rushed to Eleanor's side. The sudden sharp sound of the brakes scared Eleanor. She thought someone was going to hit her. She turned her head and wanted to scold someone. She turned her head and saw a cool sports car. If this car was not Adrian's, who else could it be? At this moment, Ian's Bentley drove in front of her from the side. The window rolled down and Ian's handsome face appeared. Eleanor, where are you going? I'll drive you, Ian offered. Eleanor did need a ride urgently, but she did not dare to take Ian's help. No need. Someone will pick me up, Eleanor said. She tried to open the door of Adrian's sports car, but the car was locked from the inside. At that moment, the door of the sports car clicked open. She opened the door of the passenger seat and sat inside. Ian looked at the back of the sports car and sighed. He could tell that there was no sweetness or love between Adrian and Eleanor. Therefore, he still had a chance as long as he worked harder. 
She could pretend all she wanted, but he knew that they were meant to be together. Eleanor sat in the sports car and felt awkward for a while. Then she decided to just let it be and take what was being given to her. She smiled awkwardly at Adrian. Thank you. Where are you going? She asked. The company, Adrian said. Eleanor looked a little embarrassed. She quickly asked in a low voice, Can you take me to a place? I'm very busy, Adrian replied coldly. Please, just give me a ride. I'm really in a hurry. I have a friend waiting for me. Please. Eleanor put her hands together and could only beg him. She hated it, but that's all she could do. Fine. Tell me where Adrian seemed a little annoyed, but he couldn't bring himself to refuse. She was already in his car, and her arm was hardly a few inches away from his. Her perfume was taking over his senses. Eleanor immediately gave an address and saw Adrian turn the wheel. She felt dizzy and quickly grabbed her seatbelt. She turned to him and saw that his jaw was clenched. Was he angry again? What was the deal with him? What the hell did she even do? Did she make the wrong choice? She should have chosen to take Ian's car instead. At least he wouldn't kill her. George was about to come to have dinner with his daughter and grandson. Before that, Eleanor said to Flynn, Promise mommy one thing. Can you not tell your grandfather who your daddy is? If her father knew about it, then Melissa would also find out. She did not want them to know too much about her. Moreover, Adrian was Flynn's father. She didn't know what was going to happen to them. Why? Flynn asked, puzzled. Anyway, just listen to mommy. We'll tell him in the future, okay? Eleanor explained. Okay, the little kid replied. Ten minutes later, the doorbell rang. Eleanor looked into the cat's eyes and opened the door. She saw her father come up with gifts and fruits. Dad, come on, don't buy gifts for Flynn. He has enough, Eleanor complained to her father. It's rare for me to come and take a look at him. How can I not buy some presents? I am his grandfather. George looked at his grandson in his school uniform in the hall after he finished speaking. He immediately put down his usual dignified persona and became very loving and gentle. Grandpa, long time no see. Flynn walked in front of him and hugged his legs. He looked up at him with a smile. Flynn, how have you been? How's school? George picked him up and sat on the sofa. I have made many friends, Grandpa. How about you? The little kid asked, imitating his teacher's words. Grandpa is doing well, too. I just missed you a little, so I came to see you, George explained. Dad, sit down first. I'm going to finish cooking. She went back to the kitchen to get busy. Since Adrian was not here to eat, she figured she didn't need to be too mindful and didn't have to make too many extras. George gave the new toy to Flynn. He liked it very much. It was a remote-controlled plane. He held it in his arms and could not close his mouth. George was also very happy when he saw that Flynn liked it. He looked at this warm little home. It seemed that his daughter and grandson were doing well. He was looking around and suddenly saw a door on one of the walls. He could not help but feel strange. He got up and walked to the kitchen door. He asked his daughter, who was cooking, Eleanor, why is there another door here? Eleanor had already thought of an excuse. Oh, Valerie moved to the next door apartment and we opened up this common door. George knew his daughter's best friend was Valerie. When he heard this, he did not ask. He nodded and said, it's not bad for you guys to take care of each other like this. Eleanor guiltily did not look at her father's face. Yes, exactly. If her father knew that the person living next door was Adrian, he would definitely be very shocked. This man was a legendary man in the business world. Even if her father saw him, he was the kind of person that could not be climbed up. He would become wary of her living alone like this and insist that she came back to the mansion, which was the last thing she wanted right now. After she finished cooking, the family sat at the table and ate. George also had a taste of his daughter's cooking and was full of praise. Just as he was eating, George's phone rang. He looked at it and picked it up. Hello, darling. Where are you? Melissa asked. I'm eating at Eleanor's house. Don't wait for me, George said to his wife. Melissa hung up the phone unhappily. Eleanor felt a flash of helplessness on her father's face. She could tell that Melissa did not like how close her father was with her. After the meal, 
George sat for a while and planned to leave. Eleanor walked him to the door, and only then did George think of something. He turned back to her and asked, Eleanor, do you still have contact with Adrian? We don't have any contact anymore. Eleanor did not dare to tell her father that Ian had moved upstairs. Kendra has been very sad recently because of the annulment of the engagement. I hope that since you and him have broken up, the two of you can stop pestering each other, George preached. Dad, don't worry. I know, Eleanor replied. George left and Eleanor returned to the room. She saw Flynn walk through the door and said to her in surprise, Mommy, Daddy hasn't eaten yet. He is still working and hungry. Eleanor was stunned for a moment and raised her eyebrows. How did you know? I just asked Daddy. He said he hasn't eaten yet. Mommy, quickly cook something for Daddy to eat. He is so hungry, Flynn said with a worried look. Eleanor thought Adrian must have gone to eat a high-class feast, but she did not expect him to stay home and not go out. It was almost nine now. Wasn't he starving? She could only agree. All right, I'll see if there's anything else to eat in the fridge. I'll cook some food for him to eat. There seems to be some pasta. Mommy, hurry up and cook it. Flynn was very worried. Eleanor shook her head and headed to the kitchen. She whipped up some ingredients from her pantry and made a serving of pasta. Go and ask him to come over and eat, Eleanor said to Flynn. Okay. Flynn walked through the door. Eleanor looked at him. Adrian could come into Eleanor's apartment as he liked, but Eleanor had not seen what his apartment looked like. She only took a second glance when he was renovating. The place was luxurious beyond her imagination. It had a minimalistic feel. A few minutes later, Adrian was pulled over by Flynn. He looked at the pasta on the table and then at Eleanor, who was cleaning up the house. He sat down and started to eat. Daddy, can I go to your house to watch cartoons for a while? Mommy can stay here with you. Flynn wanted to find an opportunity to let his parents stay together. Okay. Adrian was already attracted by the fragrance of the food and answered readily. Eleanor heard that her son was going to watch cartoons. She looked up and said, Don't watch for too long. I won't watch for too long. I'll sleep after Daddy finishes eating. Flynn replied to Eleanor and left through the door. Eleanor's heart slightly thumped. She looked at Adrian, who was seriously eating at the table. She did not like to spend time alone with him because it made her nervous and awkward. She didn't want to feel like that in her own house. At this moment, the elevator door outside the corridor opened. Ian walked down in his gray suit with a laptop bag in his hand. He had just returned from the company. He had wanted to go home, but when he thought about Eleanor's concert, he felt the need to come over and tell her that he would be there to watch. He walked between the two doors and cast a sidelong glance at Adrian's door. There was a complicated look in his eyes. Then, without hesitation, he pressed the doorbell of Eleanor's door. The doorbell rang especially loud at this time. Eleanor was cleaning up the sofa when she stopped. She looked at the door and did not know who would come to visit her at this time. Could it be that her father forgot something? Eleanor walked to the peephole to take a look. It was Ian outside the door. She held her breath. Why did he come to her so late at night? The doorbell was still ringing. It showed that the person outside the door was very patient. He knew that she was at home and forced her to open the door. Eleanor was already a little angry. It was already so late. Why did Ian come to find her? She had to ask him. She immediately pulled the door open and stared at Ian who was outside the door. She asked coldly, Is something the matter? I want to talk to you. Ian looked into her eyes and smiled gently. Eleanor was obviously a little resistant. She turned her face away and said, I'm sorry it's too late. It's not convenient for me to talk to you. I know that you are performing at Maya's concert. I have already bought a ticket to support you. I believe that you will perform very well, Ian said in a low voice. Thank you, Eleanor replied faintly and prepared to close the door. Ian did not want to end the conversation like this. His arm immediately blocked the door. Wait. I still have something to tell you. At this moment, a cold male voice came from behind Eleanor. She said it's not convenient. Ian was very shocked. It turned out that she was not the only one in the house. Adrian was also there. Moreover, 
The inconvenience in Adrian's words revealed that he was annoyed. Eleanor's pretty face turned slightly red. Why did Adrian interrupt her? He said it like she was with him, as if they were being disturbed or something. He just came to eat. Adrian walked to the door and stood behind Eleanor. He looked coldly at Ian, who was blocking the door. His cold eyes narrowed dangerously. Don't disturb us. After he finished speaking, he stretched out his arm and shut the door with a bang. Outside the door, Ian's heart was in a mess. His breathing was also a mess. He clenched his fists tightly. He did not believe that Eleanor and Adrian were close at the moment. Why was he here so late in the night? What the hell were they doing? Ian stood outside the door. He was in a daze and did not leave. Inside, Eleanor immediately turned her head and glared angrily at Adrian. Your words will make others misunderstand our relationship. After saying that, she walked to the table in a huff. She saw that Adrian had already finished the pasta. Adrian crossed his arms while keeping his eyes on her. When he saw her cleaning up the dishes and entering the kitchen, he leaned against the door and coldly grumbled, If I was not here, would you invite him in? To talk about old times? In the future, please don't meddle in my affairs, okay? Eleanor neatly washed the dishes and did not raise her head to give a warning. She was so embarrassed. I told you this afternoon that you are not allowed to have any contact with this man. Have you forgotten? Adrian inquired, with a voice full of danger. Eleanor finished washing the dishes and put the bowls in the cupboard. She turned back to look at Adrian, who had a domineering expression at the door. I cannot have normal social interactions. Do you want to interfere when I talk to any man in the future? Adrian could not refute her. His expression was stiff. Don't worry, I want my son to grow up in a healthy family more than you do. As for you, you better warn your mistress not to come to your house in front of my son. I don't want him to imitate you in the future, Eleanor warned him. Adrian narrowed his eyes and clenched his jaw. My private life is not as chaotic as you think, Miss Greenwich. You thought I was a hooker five years ago. I don't believe you. Eleanor would not believe him at all. All rich men had mistresses. Adrian did not need to explain this to her. He walked towards his door and turned his back to her. If that man comes looking for you again, you'd better reject him. You are not allowed to open the door he ordered with a finality in his tone. Eleanor gritted her teeth as if she did not want to hear it. Why was he suddenly so damn interested in her affairs? Adrian was about to leave Eleanor's apartment, but then he suddenly closed the door and turned back. Eleanor, who was sitting on the sofa, slightly widened her eyes. Why did this man come back? Go and sleep. It's late. Eleanor looked at him with some uncertainty. Adrian's tall body approached her step by step. Eleanor instinctively leaned on the sofa, but she had nowhere to retreat to if she wanted to get up and run, but then she braced herself. What was she afraid of? Could she be afraid of this man? This was too humiliating. Eleanor swallowed. What does this man want? She had a bad feeling. He was so intimidating, towering over her like a devil. Adrian had already arrived in front of her. He pushed his arms on both sides of her shoulders. In an instant, his tall body and his cologne enveloped Eleanor. She slightly opened her eyes and looked at him warily. The man's deep gaze was unfathomable. If you don't listen, I have a way to make you listen. Eleanor felt a strong threat and immediately looked up unwillingly. Who do you think you are? You think I will do whatever you ask me to do? Before she could finish her sentence, the man's overbearing and fiery lips sealed her disobedient mouth forcing her to swallow her words. Eleanor was about to go crazy. He was really taking advantage of the fact that Flynn was away watching cartoons. She could not help but stretch out her slender arm to push the man's chest. She squeezed her eyes shut and held her breath. However, Adrian pressed her thin shoulder without using much strength, and she did not move him. This was more than just a small compensation. Adrian pried open her tightly clenched teeth and explored deeper. Eleanor was feeling so many things at the same time. Frustration, anger, desire, and her head felt dizzy. Her breath was filled with his breath, making her even more senseless. Finally, 
he let her go. He narrowed his eyes and said, You should know that I am here. You don't have to go to someone else for your needs. When Eleanor reacted, the man had already arrived at the door. She immediately grabbed the pillow beside her and threw it over fiercely. I don't have that need. However, the man had already opened the door and left. Eleanor looked at the tightly shut door with a face that was pink. This man was too confident. Did he really think that all women would like him? Damn bastard. Next time, she will just poison his food and finish this chapter once and for all. Eleanor ruthlessly wiped her lips with her hands. That night, she tossed and turned. There was only one thought in her mind. It was too much. This man was too much. In her days, the morning arrived. It was almost another day before the concert began. Maya called her and asked her to attend the rehearsal. When Eleanor went out, thinking that it was not easy to stop a taxi, she took the car keys off the table. When she stood in the parking lot and pressed the button on her key, a red sports car responded to her, and her eyes widened slightly. Adrian had given her such a sports car? However, in the rush of the hour, Eleanor did not care about anything else. She immediately sat in the car and familiarized herself with it before driving away. Today was Wednesday and Friday night was the concert. That had already made all the fans in the country very excited and prepared to attend this concert. Maya also had a lot of high schoolers as her fans. Summer, who had already confirmed that there was a ticket to enter the venue, was already very happy. She flaunted to her classmates. As a result, two girls from the neighboring class came over and bought her favorite chocolate to please her. Summer, if you will go, then Noah will also go, right? Of course he will. Summer confirmed. Which row are you guys in? Can you tell us? We will go too, the girls asked. Summer naturally knew that these girls came for her brother who had been in high school for just a little while. Who asked him to be recognized as handsome when he had just entered high school? There were a lot of suitors and they all liked to gather information from her. Hence, most of the time, Summer received gifts and was soft-hearted. Just a little bit of news from Noah could get her snacks to eat. I don't know about this. This time it was my brother who bought us tickets. I only know that it should be in the first few rows. Summer really did not know. That meant Noah really would go. There was a girl who was looking forward to it. Summer sighed and puffed her cheeks. They were both born into the same family. Noah was the only one who could shine in front of others. As for her... People only approached her to ask about her twin brother. Noah was in the best class. Moreover, he was the best among the best. As for her, she was the last in the class. How pitiful. I heard that Santley Town University is recruiting students in our school this time. Summer? Does Noah want to go? Someone asked. But he is only in the first year of high school, another student exclaimed. His grades can jump to the third year and he can enter the university, okay? Another girl said, unconvinced. That's right. Noah could have gone a long time ago. It's just that he doesn't want to, someone explained. I hope he doesn't go abroad. This way I won't be able to see him. He is my Prince Charming. A girl swooned. That's right. I only need to look at him from afar. I don't need anything else. If I can see him every day, I have the motivation to go to school every day. Another girl exclaimed. Summer looked at this group of people speechlessly. Why did the other girls mature so early and feel all sorts of things while she felt nothing for no one? However, Summer felt that Noah might go to Santley Town this time because she saw that he was reading the course plan of the university recently. She shrugged her shoulders. Right now, she was just looking forward to the concert on Friday night the most. She supported her chin with her palm and pouted her lips. This time, Eleanor felt that the whole team was strict and valued. There was no room for mistakes. Eleanor played the piano perfectly. Maya stood on the stage and changed into various costumes. At 3.30 in the afternoon, she took the initiative to call Adrian and said that she could not leave and might be late. She asked him to pick up her son. Will you be able to cook us dinner? He asked lightly. Yes, I will be home by six, Eleanor replied. The rehearsal lasted until six o'clock. Everyone felt as if their bodies had been hollowed out. Maya patted Eleanor's shoulder. Eleanor, rest for a day tomorrow. 
The day after tomorrow, we will work hard together to finish this concert. Okay, tomorrow, I will practice at home. Eleanor looked at her and said, Take a good rest too. I think you've been too tired lately. After this concert, I will take three months off. After Maya finished speaking, she left with her team. Eleanor walked to the garage. When everyone saw her sit in the red sports car, they were shocked. Miss Greenwich was not only good at piano, but also very good at cars. It was probably because of her good family background. Eleanor hurried home and reached the parking lot at the entrance of the building. She quickly entered the supermarket not far away to buy groceries. While she was choosing the vegetables, suddenly a warm voice called her from behind. Eleanor, what a coincidence. Eleanor turned her head and saw Ian pushing a shopping cart to pick up vegetables. She looked at him in surprise. You cook by yourself? Ian nodded. Yes. My house is not big enough and I don't like outsiders entering, so I usually make dinner by myself. Eleanor nodded and then walked ahead. Ian stared at her figure and asked curiously, What is your relationship with Adrian? Eleanor knew that Ian must have misunderstood last night. It was all Adrian's fault for making their relationship sound too intimate. Eleanor did not even turn her head and said, We have nothing to do with each other. Ian's eyes lit up and his mood immediately lifted. Really? I think he is not the type you like. It is said that he has an arrogant personality and treats people coldly. He is also famous for being a stoic-faced bastard in the business world. You never liked this kind of person. Eleanor felt weird hearing all this about Adrian. She turned her head and sneered. It has been five years. How do you know that my taste hasn't changed? Ian immediately choked but he still looked forward to it. I believe a person doesn't change so easily. Eleanor, I know you. No matter how much time has passed, I will always wish the best for you, and I will make sure you know that I will always be here. Eleanor did not want to argue with Ian. She chose the food she wanted to cook that night and went to the meat section. Ian followed behind her. Wherever she went, he would follow her. This made Eleanor speechless, but she could not do anything to him. At the entrance of the supermarket, Flynn's remote-controlled robot was out of battery. Adrian brought him down to buy it. He looked in the direction of the electronics aisle and led his son there. Eleanor quickly finished shopping and pushed the cart towards the direction of the bill counter. Behind her, in Ian's eyes, her expression of wanting to escape was especially cute. If you still want to buy anything, then hurry up and pick. Don't follow me. Eleanor turned around and said to him. Ian shook his head. I've bought everything I need. The two of them lined up in front of each other. Adrian held a row of batteries in his hand and led Flynn to the end of the line. When he saw Eleanor and Ian, his eyes turned cold and his face became gloomy. Flynn was not tall yet, he was blocked by the line of people and could not see Mommy. However, his big eyes were looking at the self-service Hagen dazs next to him. It was Eleanor's turn to pay the bill. She took the food to the counter and Ian immediately mixed the food from his cart with her goods. She turned to look at him in shock. The next second, Ian took out a card and said to her, I'll pay. No need. After saying that, Eleanor turned to the cashier and said, Please settle the bill separately. At this time, the cashier had already swept all the goods into an order. She shook her head and said, I have already swept the numbers. Eleanor did not want to make things difficult for the cashier. She quickly searched in her bag to look for a card. At this time, Ian pulled her out of the counter and said, Don't look for it, I will pay. No! Eleanor did not want to use his money. At this time, the cashier reported the price. Eleanor had just found the card and quickly handed it over, Use this. Ian's big palm directly held her small hand together with the card. At the same time, he handed over his bank card. The cashier also quickly took his card and swiped it. Eleanor hurriedly withdrew her hand from his palm. Ian kept staring at her. Adrian was witnessing this whole scene from a distance. Seeing that she and Ian were going to leave together, he said to Flynn, Your mommy is there. Flynn squeezed out of the line in front of them in surprise. Then he saw Eleanor who was about to leave and said happily, Mommy, Mommy. 
Eleanor heard her son's voice and turned her head abruptly. She saw her son running towards her. She looked at him and at the same time saw Adrian. Ian narrowed his eyes. There was a trace of competition in his eyes. Eleanor turned her head to look at Ian. You go first. Ian was very happy to be able to get along with Eleanor for a short time today. He looked at Adrian and left first. Adrian was carrying a small bag in his hand. Inside was the small battery Flynn wanted, but his expression was very arrogant. His back was stiff and cold. His entire persona seemed to be covered in a layer of frost. Eleanor saw his eyes and immediately frowned. What kind of anger was he feeling? But thinking about it, he must have seen the scene of her paying the bill with Ian. Flynn raised his head and said to Eleanor, Daddy and I came down to buy the battery. My remote control device is out of battery. Then let's go home. Eleanor held Flynn's hand and walked in front. She ignored Adrian, who looked unhappy behind her. When they reached the elevator door, Eleanor held her son's hand and leaned against the wall while Adrian stood rigidly without moving. Flynn sensed a strange aura. He raised his head to look at Mommy and then at his silent daddy. The atmosphere was not right. Mommy, you didn't greet daddy, Flynn said to Eleanor. We are so familiar with each other, we do not need to greet each other. Of course, Eleanor knew the reason behind this man's sullen face, but she did not want her son to know. Who is very familiar with you? The man in front of her said in disgust. He turned his head and looked at her with a heavy gaze. Eleanor was now sure that this man was really angry. She did not know what to say. She did not deliberately ask Ian to go to the supermarket. She just happened to run into him. She could not be blamed for this. Besides, she really didn't like him interfering too much with her social interactions. Ian wasn't the kind of person who would commit heinous crimes. Even if she couldn't be his lover, she could at least be his friend. At this moment, the elevator opened. Eleanor bit her lips and walked out of the elevator holding her son's hand. When they entered the door, Adrian said to Flynn, I'll give you the battery. Okay? Flynn followed him in. Eleanor went back home to prepare dinner. Flynn's robot was back to functioning immediately, and he was having a good time. He was so engrossed that he did not even realize that his daddy was missing. Eleanor was standing in front of the basin washing vegetables. Suddenly, she felt a strong gaze behind her. She turned her head and saw Adrian at the door. Looks like you pretended not to hear my warning last night, he snorted coldly. Before Eleanor could react, the man approached her in an instant. He was a head taller than her, making the narrow kitchen appear even more crowded, making it hard for her to breathe. What? Eleanor leaned against the table while Adrian's body was almost pressed against her. She quickly looked up and warned, Go away. In the next second, Eleanor's slender chin was pinched and raised. Her eyes had to meet his thick and dangerous gaze. You want to steal your sister's man? Adrian's deep voice was full of mockery. Eleanor's pretty face turned red. This sentence was like a thorn in her heart. This must be the thing she did not like to hear the most. What nonsense are you talking about? Eleanor was almost angered to death. It was clearly Kendra who snatched her man back then. What am I talking about? How could you not know? I forbid you to be intimate with him at the doorstep of the house. You guys hide in the supermarket and you flirt with him. That is a place my son and I often go to. Adrian let go of her chin and bent over. A domineering warning spilled into her ears. Eleanor's mind went blank for a few seconds. This man was insulting her. From which eye did he see her flirting with Ian? Besides, even if she and Ian got back on good terms, what did it have to do with this man? What right did he have to control her? Sure, according to you, I can't talk to him near my house. Then, can I just get back to my old relationship with him when I'm far away from home? Eleanor deliberately raised her head to provoke him. This sentence made the coldness in the man's eyes intensify for no reason. It was as dense as fog. How dare you? Adrian squeezed out a few words from his lips. Eleanor looked up at him fearlessly. Why can't I dare? The man narrowed his eyes and his handsome face approached her. Eleanor's breath suddenly stopped. Adrian's aggressive tone fell on her face. 
Eleanor, if you dare to be with Ian, I will punish you. Do you think I can't do anything to you? Think about your father's career and your son's custody. If you dare to disobey me, I will take away the most important thing in your life, Adrian warned. After saying that, he did not look at her. He turned around and strode away, but his back showed his absolute anger. Eleanor gulped. She could not say anything. This man must be sick. Eleanor decided not to argue with him. Furthermore, she knew very well what kind of relationship she had with Ian. She did not need this man to warn her every time. Even if Ian pursued her again now, she would never agree to it. Putting aside his betrayal in the past, Kendra was still entangled with Ian. She did not want the entire Greenwich family to fall into chaos. At least this way, her father's life would be easier at home. Eleanor finished cooking and knocked on the door. Flynn was the first to push the door open and enter. Behind him, Adrian followed with a cold expression. At the dinner table, Flynn felt the oppressive silence between Daddy and Mommy. He could only obediently eat a big bowl of vegetables. Daddy, Mommy, don't fight. You are all adults. You can solve any problem if you think about it. After Flynn finished speaking, he blinked and left the table. He gave time to the two adults to solve the problem rationally. However, the two people at the table did not want to talk to each other. Adrian got up and left the table after dinner. Eleanor had hoped that he would leave. She did not want to live in melancholy every day. This way, her life would be shortened by ten years. She was extremely angry. She ran to the balcony and called Valerie. Valerie had just finished filming and was sitting in the car returning to the hotel when Eleanor directly complained to her, Valerie, I am about to go crazy. I really cannot bear Adrian. This guy, he's a psychopath. Valerie laughed. What's wrong? Why did he anger you to the point of you going crazy? If I were stronger than him, I would want to hit him. It's a pity that I can't beat him up. Eleanor felt that just complaining about him was very polite. What's wrong? Is Adrian not easy to get along with? Valerie asked in a concerned voice. He is simply a block of ice. Who can live with him? Living in an oppressive atmosphere every day, I am about to go crazy, Eleanor whined. But he is your son's father. You must live with him. Valerie was very direct. Who said I must live with him? I want to move now and take my son away. Eleanor was furious with this everyday nonsense now. No matter where you take Flynn, Adrian will find you two. With his wealth, there is no place he can't afford. You should learn to adjust. Don't be angry. I'll treat you to a big meal when I come back. Valerie also felt sorry for her. It was rare to see Eleanor's good temper being angered to the point of frustration. Eleanor took a deep breath. I want to, too. But who would have thought that he would simply be a bastard? He is narrow-minded. I've never seen a man who was more narrow-minded than him. He wants to control my life and always judges me. I can't stand him. Even if you can't bear it, you have to endure it. Suddenly, a man's voice came from behind, shocking Eleanor out of her wits. Eleanor was so scared that she almost dropped her phone on the balcony. Luckily, she hugged it and turned around. Adrian was standing behind her. Eleanor's head exploded. Did he hear everything? Yes, he was an eavesdropping maniac. I'm calling my friend. Can you give me some privacy? Eleanor said with frustration. You are not allowed to teach my son how to rail about people behind their backs. Adrian snorted. You are the villain. I did berate you. I'm going to berate you face to face. If you can't take it anymore, you can move back to your big villa. Don't stay here. Eleanor wanted to goad him away. Adrian looked at her coldly. He walked to his son's room and found a set of clean clothes for him. He pushed the door open and left. Eleanor slightly opened her mouth. He was actually not angry? Hello. Valerie had still not hung up the phone. Eleanor quickly picked up the phone and answered with a face full of tears. He heard it. He was standing behind me just now. He heard everything and I talked about him. So miserable. Then is he angry? Valerie started to worry for her. How could anyone dare to berate Adrian? I didn't see any reaction from him. He took Flynn's clothes and left. Eleanor pouted. That's good. You scared me to death. I thought he was going to teach you a lesson. Valerie sighed in relief. 
If he dares to teach me a lesson, I will definitely move away, Eleanor snorted and said. Eleanor, how are the preparations for the concert going? Valerie changed the topic and did not want her to keep getting angry. Eleanor's mood suddenly became better and she smiled. Fortunately, I am fully prepared. I knew I could recommend you. It's a pity that I can't be at the scene, Valerie said. It's fine. It's the same for you to watch the live broadcast, Eleanor shrugged. Okay, I'll definitely watch the live broadcast on time and cheer for you. Valerie was truly happy for her friend. All right, I'll cheer you on too. I definitely won't mess things up, Eleanor promised. On the other side, Valerie was perfunctory. She was clearly very tired, and Eleanor did not want to take up her rest time. She said caringly, Valerie, quickly go and rest. Pay attention to your health. Okay then, I'll go and sleep. I stayed up all night to film until early in the morning. I'm so sleepy right now. Let's meet again when I come back, Valerie answered. Okay, go and rest, Eleanor replied, and Valerie hung up. After the call with Valerie, Eleanor's mood finally became better. It was just that she thought that Adrian had actually overheard her conversation just now. Why did he not seem to be as angry as before? In short, she could not figure out what he was thinking in the Miller's mansion. Summer looked at the tightly knitted brows of Noah and asked carefully, how many questions did I get right? There are 10 questions in total and five of them are wrong. The three questions are answered casually. Only two are correct, Noah pointed out without any hesitation. I answered seriously, I did it right, okay? Summer exclaimed. Okay, in front of me, calculate the formula once. Let me see if your calculation is correct or not. Noah glanced at her. At this time, Summer puffed her cheeks and looked at the question. She was panicking. She did not know how to calculate. Fine, then, she wrote it casually. You're still trying to quibble. How could I not know your strength? Noah asked, rolling his eyes. Hey, let me ask you, are you really going to study in Santley Town? Are you not going to high school with me? Summer suddenly asked her brother. Dad wants me to go. I want to go, too. Noah nodded. Summer was upset that Noah wanted to leave the house. No, you're not leaving. Who will teach me my homework? She immediately reached out and held his arm, not allowing him to leave. Noah smiled. Don't worry. After I leave, Mom and Dad will find you a good tutor. What tutor? I don't want it. I want you to teach me. Summer still did not let him go. In her eyes, there was no one who was easier to talk to than her brother. No matter what she did, he would not be angry. He is our brother's good friend, Marlo Stewart. It is said that he has just returned with a double degree. It is more than easy for him to teach a little high school student like you. Noah winked at her and smiled. But he is not as easy to talk to as I am. Summer heard him and immediately widened her big, clear eyes. I don't want him to teach me. I want you to teach me. Noah, you are not allowed to leave me behind. After saying that, she immediately blinked. Wait, is his brother Gary Stewart the CEO of Skyscreen Entertainment? What? Do you still not want this guy to teach you? Noah looked at her playfully. Don't talk nonsense. In the future, I'm going to be a part of the entertainment industry. If I can get to know the top person in the entertainment industry, my career will naturally be bright. No way. I still want you to teach me. Noah, I beg of you. I am a person who wants to do big things. I don't want to stay with a nobody like you. Noah crossed his arms with a proud look on his face. Then he glanced at her. I heard that you sold information related to me. You got a lot of benefits, snacks, comic books, and movie tickets. You're not allowed to do this anymore. Summer smiled and guiltily pursed her lips. I did not do this. Didn't you? You know it very well. Anyway, don't get me into trouble. After saying that, he rudely knocked her head, don't do it again. Summer puffed her cheeks. Do you want to teach me or not? Watch carefully. I will only explain it once. Noah sighed and picked up his pen again. You know that my brain is not working well. Explain it a few more times. Summer threw her hands in the air dramatically. To be honest, Noah could not throw away this opportunity. It was not good for his sister, but his father said that Marlo would come, so he was relieved. He was a top student that he had heard of a long time ago. At nine, Summer finally finished her homework. Mrs. Miller came over to bid them good night. 
Summer thought of the concert on Friday night and was so excited that she could not sleep. She really wanted to go and watch. Then she planned to look for her nephew's mother, Eleanor, after the concert ended and beg her to teach her the piano. Then she would be able to enter the inner circle and help her mother find out about the relationship between her brother and Miss Greenwich. She really hoped that her brother would marry Miss Greenwich and bring her as her sister-in-law, because she also did not want her nephew to have a stepmother in the future. To be able to educate such an outstanding little kid, Miss Greenwich must be very talented. The next day, Eleanor rested at home for a day. After she recovered her energy the next morning, she woke up early. The concert was about to begin. There were still 10 hours before the concert started. It was supposed to start at 7 in the evening and end at 10. At 9 in the morning, Eleanor received a call from Maya. She had invited a guest friend to attend the first rehearsal today. If it was convenient for her, she would let that friend go through the procedures together. Now, Eleanor had put all her attention on this concert. Of course, she attached great importance to it. She agreed to attend around 10 o'clock. Eleanor went downstairs and saw the cool red sports car. She had no choice but to drive it. She hoped that her car would be repaired quickly so that she would no longer need Adrian's car. What happened last night was very unpleasant. If Adrian did not interfere with her life, she could get along well with him. It was just that he was too presumptuous. She and Ian had known each other since they were young. Now that they met again, they could not go on being strangers. Therefore, it was normal for them to see each other on the road and greet each other. Thinking about it, she felt that Adrian was too overbearing. Eleanor drove to the concert venue. At this time, all the staff members were preparing for the three-hour concert tonight. When she walked over, she saw Maya talking to a tall man. Maya saw her and immediately called out, Eleanor, you're here! The man who was speaking to Maya suddenly turned around. He wore a fitting suit on him. He looked fashionable and mature and was especially charming. Eleanor looked at him and slightly widened her eyes. Oh my God. Maya did not tell her that she would invite Michal Jules. He was a double star in music and television. Eleanor had been infatuated with him before, so when she saw him now, she was so surprised that her mouth ran dry. To add to that, Michal was looking directly at her right now. Michael Jules was staring at Eleanor right now, and she was screaming inside. You are Eleanor, Valerie's good friend? He asked. Do you know Valerie? Eleanor asked in slight surprise. We worked together once two years ago. Michal reached out his hand and said, My name is Michal. Eleanor quickly reached out and shook his hand. I know. I heard Maya praise you just now, he informed her, chuckling softly at her dazed expression. Eleanor's face turned slightly red, and she smiled shyly. You actually have a child. In my eyes, you seem like a college student. Michal's eyes shone with an inexplicable light. Maya felt that Michal was interested in Eleanor, so she thought of matchmaking them. She liked Eleanor and hoped that Mahal could find happiness. I'll go over there first. I'll come to find you guys if there's anything. Maya quickly left after she finished speaking. Eleanor's heart missed a beat a few times. She and Mahal felt Maya's intention to leave at the same time. The atmosphere instantly became a little awkward. Michal did not hide his interest in her and said, Let's go over there and have a chat. Of course, Eleanor could not ignore her idol's good intentions. She nodded and followed him to the chair beside them as they chatted. After sitting down, Eleanor smiled and asked, You are tonight's mysterious guest, right? Michal narrowed his eyes and smiled. Yes, I'm here to help. I used to like one of your songs very much. There was a piano piece in that song, too. I heard you made it yourself. It's very nice. You're really talented. Eleanor did not hide her admiration for him. I also know that there was a little boy who was extremely popular a while ago. He was your son. It seems that you are also a talented woman, Michal mentioned. Eleanor immediately smiled. Along with her bright smile, Michal could not help but stare blankly for a few seconds. The innocence in her eyes seemed to be hard to find in the entire entertainment industry. At this time, Maya had no choice but to ask Eleanor to prepare for the rehearsal. She gave Michal an embarrassed smile. 
I'll go to the rehearsal first. Okay, see you later. Michal nodded with a smile. His long fingers rested on his chin. His face was also very handsome. He looked at her with a soft gaze. In the quiet hall, the sound of a piano rang out. Everyone was stunned for a few seconds. Michal's eyes sparkled. Eleanor was really good at playing the piano. A light shone on her body. She looked like a fairy in the forest. The light was dazzling and mesmerizing. Today, the entire Atticus City was especially lively because fans from all over the country were looking forward to the concert. In the Miller Group headquarters, after Adrian had finished signing the contract, his assistant presented him with 10 tickets for the evening event. Each ticket bore Eleanor's picture. Adrian's gaze intensified as he reached for one of the tickets, his penetrating eyes fixated on the captivating, smiling image of Eleanor. Tonight, Ian had also acquired a ticket for her sake, granting him entry into the venue. It was evident that she possessed a considerable charm. Sir, you can enter the venue at six in the evening. Don't be late, the assistant reminded him and went out with the documents. Adrian's phone rang. It was his sister. I'll go to the entrance with Noah after class. Hurry up and finish your work. Don't be late, Summer's voice was heard. I know, Adrian answered in a low voice. I'll meet you guys at the venue after I pick up Flynn. Okay. Summer hung up the phone. Adrian hung up the phone and narrowed his eyes. If he did not have to accompany his son and sister to the concert, he would not be interested in this kind of thing. In order to avoid Kendra's entanglement, Ian had already chosen to work at home. His ticket had also been sent over. He was very interested in tonight's concert. Kendra relied on her friends to get a ticket to the front seat. Her interest in this concert was only to find Ian. She cursed Eleanor for making her so desperate. Everyone was still in the process of setting up the concert venue. Eleanor was preparing backstage. She was checking the piano and tuning it to perfection. Suddenly, a bottle of mineral water was handed over to her. She was stunned for a moment. She looked up and saw Michal smiling at her. Drink some water first. It is still early, he said. Thank you, Eleanor reached out to take it. Michal saw her drink a few mouthfuls of water and covered the piano. He was suddenly interested. Can you play a piece with me? Eleanor heard her idol's request and she could not refuse. Furthermore, she was also interested. It was like a dream. She nodded. Okay. Michal sat beside her and chose a song. The two of them coordinated perfectly. A staff member who was fiddling with his equipment took out his phone and secretly recorded the scene of them playing the piano together. The two of them were sitting very close. As they played the piano, their eyes met, filled with deep affection, and they shared a soft smile. People who didn't know what was going on would feel that they were lovers. This staff member planned to sell this news to the media after the concert. At that time, he would definitely make a fortune. Any gossip about a big star like Mikkel would be money. After playing the song, Michal admired Eleanor even more. He had nothing to do. He just sat beside her and talked to her about her passion for music. Eleanor would answer any question Michal asked. The two of them chatted happily. This staff member also recorded this scene. It seemed like Michal was going to have a girlfriend soon. Around four o'clock, Maya invited the staff to dinner. She brought her friends to the side to eat. Eleanor was also there. Actually, Michal took care of her very much. At the dinner table, everyone could feel that the atmosphere between them was different. Maya was happy that they could become close to each other. She did not know about Adrian and Eleanor's living situation. She just wanted her to be happy. Under Michal's initiative, Eleanor and he exchanged phone numbers. Michal said that he would need piano accompaniment for new songs in the future and would contact her. Eleanor was also very happy to accept this kind of work. This was something she was good at. Independent women were the most beautiful. She had thought it through. She earned money on her own and loved to spend it on her son. With good opportunities to earn money, she would not waste them. Michal was very happy to get her contact information he could also see that Eleanor's admiration for him was only due to his talent in music. In front of this girl, 
Michal did not dare to be confident that she would agree to be his girlfriend, but he had already planned to take action. He also knew from Maya that Eleanor's family background was not ordinary. Her father was a famous businessman, so he needed the courage to pursue such a girl. In the big square outside the entrance, there were already many fans gathered. They were waiting for the entrance time to start at six o'clock. A black luxury Bentley car drove over from the side of the square. A young girl and a young man stepped out of the car. They were both very beautiful, and their facial features were very similar. One look and one could tell that they were siblings. Summer's heart simmered with excitement as she beheld the vibrant spectacle before her. Laughter escaped her lips, and she couldn't resist leaping like a child. Meanwhile, Noah stood nonchalantly with his hands tucked into his pockets, emanating an air of cool, rugged handsomeness. His towering stature prompted gasps of astonishment from the nearby young girls, who couldn't help but fix their gaze upon him, their eyes refusing to blink. Their adoration overflowed, but Noah's countenance remained frigid, distancing him from any potential interaction with these admirers. Consequently, the young girls could only admire him from a distance, longing for a conversation that remained beyond their reach. When will he arrive? I can't wait any longer. Summer pouted her red lips and was very anxious. She wanted to enter the venue as soon as possible. Don't be anxious. It's still early. Noah was calm. Summer pulled him up and said, Come, let's go there and buy something. There are still many banners there. I want to buy it. Noah could only be pulled over by her. Summer bought snacks and banners. She was overjoyed. In the end, Noah also held two banners in his hands. He felt that this was very childish. Enough, right? Noah frowned when he saw his sister looking around again. Let me look again. Get me a pair of bracelets, Summer said. I don't want to wear them. Noah refused. Who said it was for you? This is for my nephew and me. Summer bought it without hesitation. At six, the fans queued up to enter the venue. Summer puffed her cheeks with envy and then secretly complained, Why is he not here yet? It would be terrible if he could not catch up. While Summer was very anxious, she kept looking at the time. In her eyes, she did not think of her brother as an omnipotent god because she had never seen her family as super-rich business celebrities, except that she knew that her family did not lack money. Her parents did not pamper her, so she did not realize how powerful her brother was. The fans were all punctual, and the crowd rushed in. After half past six, everyone had already gone in. Soon after, Kendra's driver brought her to the square. She brought two female friends into the square. There were many people in the crowd. She kept looking around for Ian, but unfortunately, she did not find him. Ian was already here. His car was parked in a corner of the square. He did not like crowded places. Therefore, he was reading documents in his car and waiting for the last few minutes to enter. At the same time, Adrian picked up the car and brought Flynn to the restaurant for dinner before rushing over. Because the concert was three hours long, he was worried that Flynn would be hungry. When Summer called, it was already almost seven. She only saw Adrian appear with Flynn in a tuxedo and shoes under the escort of six bodyguards. Adrian's black hair was combed back into a very slick hairstyle. He looked as if he had just come out of the cover of a business magazine. Flynn, too, was looking adorable in his tiny little tuxedo. Brother, why are you dressed like this? You look so serious. Watching a concert is a relaxing thing to begin with. It's not fun to dress like this. Summer stepped forward and started to criticize him, then, in the next second, she picked up Flynn and walked around in circles. I missed you so much. Adrian only smiled faintly at his sister's criticism. It was rare for him to accompany his younger brother and sister out during his free time at work. He was also in a good mood today. Hurry up. It's going to close soon. Summer looked at the time and was immediately scared out of her wits. Adrian picked up Flynn, who was beside him, and walked forward with his long legs. Surrounded by bodyguards, Adrian walked calmly towards the entrance. At the entrance, Adrian's handsome face suddenly darkened. He saw Ian wearing gold-framed glasses at the ticket check-in area. Ian also turned around and saw him, but he didn't show any expression. 
Instead, he looked at the child in Adrian's arms with a gentle expression and entered first. However, no one noticed that Adrian's expression had turned a little gloomy and ugly. Eleanor was getting ready for her next song in the green room. I'm ready, Eleanor declared confidently, her every step adorned with a pair of exquisite crystal high heels. Instantly, her entire demeanor elevated to new heights, exuding a noble elegance reminiscent of a true princess. Meanwhile, on the grand stage, Maya's enchanting singing voice captivated the audience. The fervent fans gathered below couldn't contain their excitement, feverishly capturing photographs and cheering with unbridled enthusiasm. However, Adrian, who was sitting in the fourth row, did not seem to have any interest in listening to the song. He slightly frowned. He did not know what he was thinking. Flynn pulled his sleeves. Adrian immediately lowered his head. Is my mommy pretty tonight? Flynn asked excitedly in his ear. Adrian was in front of his son. He did not want to panic. He smiled and said, She is very pretty. Then did you fall in love with her? Flynn asked again. Adrian did not answer. He just smiled and stroked his little head. Then he swept his cold gaze in Ian's direction. He saw that Ian wasn't in the stands. His gaze fell on a spot in front of him as if he was recalling something. His mind suddenly traveled back to the night five years ago. She was very naive back then, to the point where he thought she was pretending. It seemed to him now that that night was probably her first time. This meant that she had never been intimate with the Rockstone guy before. A small smile made its way to his face, but soon after, it dropped. Adrian thought about the picture he found online of Eleanor and Ian holding hands and smiling. His expression turned cold. Flynn did not ask any more questions. He knew that Mommy was so beautiful tonight. Many people would fall in love with her. He hoped that Daddy was one of them. After Maya finished singing this song, she interacted with fans again. Next, she needed to invite a guest to help. The music was also very fast and cheerful. After she finished singing the scene quieted down. The piano sound was like a pearl falling onto a silent sea. It rose from the revolving platform in the middle. Everyone was stunned to see the innocent charm of the woman on the piano turn into an art of seduction. Moreover, Eleanor's music had a completely different melody. The meaning of the rhythm was very obvious. This was enough to see her attainments in piano. This made the audience under the stage gasp in astonishment. However, there were two men below the stage who narrowed their eyes in an instant. Towards her current attire, they revealed a look of shock and desire. To them, she was dressed in too little clothing. Adrian frowned and could not help but curse in his heart. Doesn't she know that she has a child? She is actually dressed like this. Who does she want to wear it for? He wondered and couldn't help but look at Ian. Could it be that she was trying to seduce him on the stage? At this moment, Ian was also very surprised. He kept staring at Eleanor. He was afraid that she would disappear in front of his eyes, and all of this was seen by Adrian. He felt that Ian was enticed by her clothes. Adrian bit his lips. There was no admiration in his eyes. He wanted to take off his suit immediately and put it on for her. He wanted to give her a good warning after she left the stage. In the future, she would never wear such revealing clothes on stage. However, in other people's eyes, Eleanor's attire was not bare, but a kind of artistic beauty. Even Summer felt that she was very beautiful. She thought that when she became a star in the future, she would also have an endless amount of beautiful clothes and would dress up like Eleanor. Others looked at her with lustful eyes, while Adrian looked at her with a gaze that was filled with confusion, desire, and need. Her skin was shining and she looked stunning. On the big screen, it seemed that even the cameraman wanted to give her a few more shots, especially the light on her chest, which made people vaguely know that she had a perfect figure. Adrian harbored a strong desire to confront the photographer, his mind inundated with such thoughts, yet all he could do was display his discontent through a somber countenance. Inwardly, he yearned for this to be her final performance, sparing her the need to attire herself in such a manner solely to appease Ian. 
Simultaneously, he wished to shield her from the lustful gazes of the men in the audience, their eyes hungrily appraising her body. If Eleanor were aware of his thoughts, she would likely dismiss them with disdain. She wore her chosen attire not to placate others, but to satisfy her own desires. She possessed the freedom to dress as she pleased, immune to anyone's control. Beneath the stage, Kendra seethed with anger, teetering on the brink of losing control. She couldn't shake the belief that Eleanor deliberately wore this dress to captivate Ian's attention. After all, they shared the same father, making Kendra suspicious of her half-sister's nefarious intentions to snatch Ian away from her. Though Eleanor feigned innocence on the surface, Kendra was all too aware of her own intense desire to claim Ian as her own. As the passionate love song reached its conclusion, Eleanor clutched her chest with both hands, catching her breath. With an elegant bow, she gracefully exited the stage. Once Eleanor retreated backstage, she could finally get a breather. Maya, understanding the need for her to recharge, had arranged all the necessary songs in front of her. Eleanor could now indulge in a well-deserved 20-minute break, dedicating the time to touch up her makeup in preparation for her final performance of the evening. Coincidentally, her last accompaniment was the song Maya and Michal sang together. Michal accompanied her to the dressing room, and the makeup artist did not need to rush to put on makeup for her. Her last set of clothes was black. The black evening dress made her temperament seem to have changed again, revealing mystery and coldness, and an aura that made one afraid to approach. Michal was captivated by her tonight. His love for her was almost overflowing in his heart, but he did not dare to express it. If that happened, it would be too fast. He was afraid of scaring her away. He wanted to approach her with the most sincere intentions. Even though she had a child, he didn't care. He liked that child very much too. He didn't think about having his own child either. If she was willing to marry him, he would treat that child as his own son and raise him. It was a pity that Flynn's biological father had already appeared. At this moment, he was by his side like an inviolable god. The last evening dress had a long tail and slanted shoulders. The black veil wrapped around her exquisite body. Her skin looked like silk under the black net, and her beautiful collarbones were clearly visible. Eleanor thought that after she finished playing the last song, she must go to look for her son, and then accompany him to watch Maya's concert until the end. Just as she was waiting, her phone suddenly rang. She picked it up and saw that it was Adrian calling. She thought that her son must be unable to hold back his excitement and wanted to call her. She pursed her lips and smiled. Hello, Flynn. However, it was not Flynn's voice. Instead, it was a low and cold voice. It's me. There was some silence at the other end of the phone. Clearly, he was not at the venue. Eleanor was startled. Why was it Adrian? She quickly asked worriedly. Where are you? Where's Flynn? I'm in the bathroom. Flynn is being taken care of by my bodyguards. Adrian replied to her in an indifferent tone. Why did you call me? Is something the matter? Eleanor asked in confusion. How many songs do you have to play? He ignored her question. There's one more song. I'll meet you guys in about 20 minutes, Eleanor said. You better wear something decent this time. Don't you think your previous outfit was embarrassing? His voice sounded very angry. Eleanor slightly widened her eyes. He actually dared to comment about her clothes. This is a stage costume. I think it looks very good. How can it be embarrassing? Eleanor asked back. Anyway, you better wear something better when you go on stage. Otherwise, you will regret it. Adrian warned her fiercely and hung up the phone. Eleanor faced the phone with a small face full of annoyance and speechlessness. Why did he care about what she was wearing? In the corridor, Adrian was extremely annoyed. He did not know when he took out a cigarette. After it was lit, he leaned against a place with few people in the corridor and started to smoke. His mysterious and sexy face looked even more charming. Two female fans accidentally saw him and immediately screamed. They thought they had seen a celebrity. However, Adrian gave them a cold glance. They immediately felt a chill and quickly left. He knew Eleanor was about to go on stage, and he didn't want to miss her last song. He wanted to see how she would dress this time, so he took a last drag and headed for the last song. 
Backstage, as Eleanor adorned herself in the final ensemble, Adrian's frigid countenance haunted her thoughts, leaving her feeling somewhat disheartened. At that moment, her flowing tresses transformed into voluminous waves, granting her an air of maturity. However, she refused to be swayed by his warnings. She would steadfastly pursue her own desires, disregarding his warnings. Beside her, Michal emerged in his performance suit, a well-fitted white attire exuding both warmth and charm. Standing by Eleanor's side, he flashed a smile, offering a comforting presence. Time seemed to evaporate backstage, where a whirlwind of preparations ensued. The constant flurry of tasks made even those present feel as if time were slipping away. Finally, the staff signaled that they had only five minutes left before taking the stage. Eleanor's piano came on stage from another lift. This time, she was on the side because the main character at this moment was Michal. His appearance would definitely cause another wave of loud screams. Five minutes later, the performance began. It was Eleanor's piano that broke the silence. The sound of the piano was like a recital. Every note had a faint soul. It was a moving charm that made people endlessly recall it. A man's voice was the first to be heard. It was so low that it sounded like an undertone. Every word was clear and enchanting. It made people become immersed in the song. Sure enough, the fan group seemed to have gone crazy. They shouted Michal's name loudly, and their voices kept rising and falling. Michal's perfect voice conquered them. Maya's voice was not inferior to his at all. The perfect duet had sung their emotions into the depths of their souls. The luminarist's light shone on Eleanor's body like moonlight. Her figure was faintly visible, but she did not snatch away the light of the main character. However, she was also definitely not overlooked. Adrian saw her last set of clothes. His sword-like brows were still tightly knitted in displeasure. Half of her shoulder was exposed. Of course, a woman in a black dress had an inviolable beauty. Ian was completely captivated by Eleanor tonight. He was glad that he quit the marriage, because sooner or later he would fall in love with Eleanor again. He had loved her so much that he could not extricate himself. He had loved her so much that he lost himself. Kendra had come to be completely angered tonight. She watched Eleanor transform into an even more beautiful woman again and again. In front of Ian, she seduced away this man's heart over and over again. She was so angry that she wanted to rush onto the stage and tear Eleanor apart. Summer entered the plaza and was awed by the beauty of it all. Wow! I'm finally here! Hurry up! Let's go find a seat. It's about to start, she said impatiently. Noah shook his head. He had no way to deal with this impatient sister. Adrian found his sister innocent and cute, it was very interesting because he had pampered his sister the most since he was young. He did not need to worry about his brother at all. The whole hall was filled with fans. Behind the stage, the staff were also working hard with a taut heart. Eleanor first had an accompaniment to a song. At this moment, she had already changed into stage makeup. She was dressed in a long white dress with her long hair hanging loosely. She had a fresh and elegant face and her fingers were wrapped in white light gloves. She looked like an otherworldly goddess. Because Maya would interact with her on stage this time, Eleanor's piano was not in the corner, but in the middle. So she needed to be on camera. She had been practicing piano since she was young, so her stage experience was very good. She was calm and composed. Maya was dressed in exaggerated clothing and had a very unique personality. She wore a very eye-catching feather hat on her head. She took a deep breath and walked to Eleanor's side. She lightly patted her shoulder. Eleanor, it's time for us to go on stage. Eleanor pursed her lips and smiled. Beside her, Michal, who had also accompanied her, gave her an encouraging look. Do your best. Eleanor smiled and nodded. At this moment, the stage was covered with a layer of black velvet. It was very mysterious. The fans in the venue were constantly shouting and anxiously calling for their idol to appear. Adrian and the rest had already sat down. Flynn thought that he would see Mommy and his excitement was reflected on his little face. His big eyes were like stars, sparkling with anticipation. 
His bodyguard sat around Adrian like a human wall, isolating some of the fans' enthusiasm. Ian was not far from them, and Kendra had sent spies everywhere. So, in the first few rows, her people immediately reported Ian's position, and Kendra immediately came to find him. He was not surprised when he saw Kendra. He had been avoiding her for many days. Kendra exchanged places with the fans beside him. They were male fans. When they saw her beautiful smile, they could not bear to refuse and exchanged places with her. Kendra sat beside Ian. She looked at him with excitement and joy. I finally found you. Ian looked at her. Then let's enjoy this concert together. Do you think I'm here to enjoy the concert? I'm just here to see you. Kendra immediately bit her lips with a face full of hatred. Of course, she knew that Ian came here for Eleanor. He did not say anything. He just wanted to quietly enjoy the concert. Kendra immediately took out a can of a drink from her bag and handed it to him. It's for you. I don't need it, Ian flatly refused. A strong sense of loss flashed through Kendra's eyes. Now Ian was much colder to her. Although they had been together for the past five years, and he had not been very warm to her, now she was even more uneasy. Could it be that he really did not want to be responsible for her anymore? Just because of Eleanor's return and appearance? What did Eleanor say to him? What bad things did she say about her in front of him? The hatred in Kendra's heart grew stronger. However, she did not notice that not far away, Flynn was also there. Moreover, beside him was the richest man in Atticus City. Backstage, Eleanor was also hoping that her son and the others would be there. She hoped that her son would not miss her performance. Behind the huge black velvet curtain, a series of light, breathtaking piano sounds could be heard, and the curtain was slowly pulled open on both sides. Under the bright focus light, a woman who looked like an angel was sitting on the stage. On the huge screen, she was playing with a faint smile on her face. There was also the image of her slim, slender, and agile playing. It was as if she had been kissed by God. She was playing a series of musical notes that struck everyone's heart. In the entire hall of the concert, after a moment of silence, there was a very uniform sound of breathing. All of them were captivated by the fairy-like, beautiful, and immortal-seeming woman on the stage. Mommy! Flynn called out in surprise. Summer, who was beside him, also had a look of admiration and worship on her face. Under the dim light, Adrian's gaze was unfathomable and deep, but his gaze did not leave the face of the woman on the stage for even a moment. No one could guess what he was thinking at this moment. He just kept looking at her without blinking. However, Ian, who was not far away, was stunned. He looked at the woman on the stage as if he had returned to the old times when he was with her. He recalled all the good things about her, her beauty and her expressions. He could clearly see her smile. Compared to the calm and elegant woman on the stage, there was no one he would rather have. Kendra fiercely threw the popcorn into her mouth. It was as if she was biting the flesh and bones of the woman on the stage. Of course, she saw Ian's current expression, his entire body was snatched away by Eleanor on the stage. It was as if his soul could only accommodate her alone. In the melodious and pleasant prelude, in the middle of the stage, Maya, who was holding the microphone, slowly rose. Her singing was as passionate and pleasant as always. The fans below the stage were attracted by the piano woman who had just appeared and were also entranced by Maya's voice. However, the song was so loud and clear that it surrounded the fans from all directions. After a while of shouting, they listened to it quietly and seriously. Maya sang while waving her hand to the audience. Halfway through her singing, she walked to the middle of the stage. She stood beside Eleanor and smiled at her. The combination was seamless. On the huge screen, Eleanor's face was extremely charming. Her smile was beautiful. It was like the warm sun in winter, and it was moving. It was filled with a kind of warm aura of peace and quiet. Below the stage, on the black fourth row seat, Adrian's eyes were glued to her. Summer smiled and then said to Flynn, Your mommy is really great. Of course, the little kid said proudly. Summer turned to Noah and whispered, Do you 
think Miss Greenwich will become our sister-in-law? Noah looked at Summer and smiled. Maybe, Summer nodded happily. After the first song ended, Maya and her fans interacted. Eleanor came down from the platform. She politely bowed in the direction of her fans. She thanked them and then disappeared from the stage. Eleanor had just gotten off the lift when Michal took a bouquet of flowers from somewhere and handed it to her. Before she could react, he reached out and hugged her. Eleanor was slightly stunned before she smiled and said, Thank you. Michal really did not want to let her go just like that. At this time, there was a staff member who was taking selfies. He quickly recorded this scene. Eleanor carried the flowers back to the green room. Next, she needed to change into a hot red evening dress. This was a sexy evening dress to match the theme of the song. This red evening dress had a deep plunging neckline and the back was tied up with a thin band. Therefore, Eleanor would reveal half of her waist and her chest would slightly bulge out. However, she did not care about this in order to play along with Maya's hot and spicy song. Her long hair was tied up and she had a sexy, messy hairstyle. There were long curly bangs on both sides of her forehead that fell straight to her chest. Even her eyebrows carried a seductive charm. Michal was watching her put on makeup. His heart was gradually hooked by her. He had never been so interested in a girl, and she seemed to have perfectly appeared in front of him. Although he had only known her for a day, he realized that he had fallen in love at first sight. A staff member had already arranged for two fans to present flowers. Maya and Michal had already received the flowers. After the two of them sang passionately, Michal sang in a low and charming voice as he walked towards Eleanor, who was playing the piano. Maya also looked at him with a kind of blessed smile. Michal placed the flowers on the shelf beside Eleanor's piano. The cameraman naturally would not miss such a good show. He captured Michal's affectionate gaze on Eleanor perfectly. At the same time, when Eleanor received the flowers, he also captured the gentle smile in her eyes when she looked back. In an instant, everyone below the stage saw one thing clearly. Michal was offering his love to this piano goddess. However, although the hearts of the fans were broken, they knew it was because Eleanor was so beautiful and so charming tonight. The fans also hoped that their idol would get a happy relationship. It seemed that this girl was really worthy of him. However, there were two men who were angry. Ian slightly widened his eyes. He could not believe that Michal was trying to flirt with Eleanor on stage. What was he trying to do? He clenched his fists tightly. Adrian could see it clearly. As a man, how could he not know Michal's love for Eleanor? Damn it, this woman really loved to play with men in her hands. Michal was undoubtedly a big star, and he was handsome and stylish. Of course, she was happy to accept him. At this moment, a string of ice pillars shot out from Adrian's eyes. He wished he could kill the man who was staring at Eleanor on the stage. Eleanor gave her last curtain call and then left the stage. Finally, tonight's performance was completed. Eleanor heaved a sigh of relief. The staff also immediately sent a bouquet of flowers over and congratulated her. She took the flowers and went to the dressing room. She wanted to quickly accompany her son, and she did not want to be recognized by the fans below the stage. Therefore, she had prepared a casual outfit. Eleanor was wearing a very low-profile, long gray hoodie and a dress with her slender legs exposed. Coupled with a pair of black-framed glasses, her small face was completely clean. Her long hair was tied up in half a bun, and she was dressed very casually. Who would have thought that she was the stunning goddess on stage just now? After Eleanor finished dressing, she greeted the staff. She carried her bag and sneaked through a door backstage to the venue. At this moment, everyone's eyes were on the stage. Naturally, they did not notice her. Eleanor knew that Adrian would be in the front row, so she went there to look for him. She really found him very quickly. It was mainly because of the man's aura. He did not seem to have the passion of a fan at all. She could find him at a glance, especially due to the six bodyguards sitting beside him. It was even more obvious. The bodyguards noticed her and immediately looked at her with warning eyes. However, Adrian's voice also happened to ring, let her come over. 
When Eleanor bent over to look for him, he was already looking at her. Even if this woman turned to ashes, he could recognize her at a glance. When Flynn heard Daddy's voice, he quickly turned his head to look. Before he could shout, Eleanor shushed him with a finger. Summer was also extremely excited. Miss Greenwich had come. Due to the limited space, Summer, who was sitting beside Adrian, was very smart and quick-witted as she said to her, Miss Greenwich, come here and sit. Eleanor was stunned. Looking at this pair of beautiful teenagers, she thought to herself, it must be Adrian's younger brother and sister. She smiled politely, and Summer moved aside. The bodyguard in front moved aside and let Summer sit. The bodyguard then left and stood in front of a table to wait for orders. Eleanor saw that she was given a seat and could only sit down. It was just that there was Adrian between her and her son. This made her somewhat sullen. She wondered if this man would change his seat with her son so that she could get closer to her son. But he had no intention of doing so. Summer and Noah sat in the front row, while the three of them were in the back row. Mommy, you are great. Flynn leaned on Daddy's thigh and praised her. Eleanor was wearing big black framed glasses at the moment, so naturally no one recognized her. She smiled at her son and got closer, and he kissed her on the side of her face. On the stage, Maya continued to sing. The next song was very exciting, and there was also an explosive dance performance. Eleanor also watched with great interest. However, as she was watching, she felt a very strong gaze coldly scrutinizing her. She gulped and turned her head slowly and saw Adrian looking at her with a pair of cold eyes that were dark and piercing. What happened to this man? How did she offend him? At this time, her son handed her a drink cup. Mommy, drink some water. Eleanor took it and took a sip without thinking. Because she was too thirsty and she had just finished drinking, the little boy said proudly, Mommy, this is Daddy's cup. At that moment, Eleanor did not know whether she should spit the water out or swallow it. In short, her expression was that of confusion and embarrassment. Adrian saw it and narrowed his eyes. Eleanor did not know where to spit it out, so she could only swallow it. But she did not drink it anymore and put the cup to the side. Her palm that was hanging by the side was suddenly held tightly by a large palm. It hurt her hand. She looked up in pain and saw Adrian lean towards her slightly and ask, What is it? Why can't you use my cup? This sentence was so low that only she could hear it. Eleanor had no idea what to do with him. So what if she didn't want to? She had every right not to. It's not like that. Eleanor really did not know why this man was so paranoid. Didn't she just swallow it? No, then continue drinking for me. Adrian passed his cup and straw to her mouth. Eleanor was threatened and her hand was held by him. If she screamed, everyone around would see her. If she attracted the attention of her fans, it would not be a good thing. It would be very embarrassing, so she had to be forced. She bit the straw that he had used and took two more sips. As she drank the water, she glared at him angrily and resentfully. Adrian didn't let go of her hand. He leaned over and bit her ear and said, Is the man on the stage interested in you? Eleanor knew that he was referring to Michal when she heard him. She frowned and whispered angrily, Does it have anything to do with you? Adrian snorted coldly. We have a son. Of course this matter has something to do with me. Eleanor bit her lip and said, We do have a son, but I am not your wife. Why do you care so much? Adrian's hot breath fanned her ear. I will definitely take care of this. His close proximity and his actions sent a shiver down Eleanor's back, and she closed her eyes. She wanted to hate it and be disgusted by it, but somehow she couldn't push him away. After Adrian finished speaking, he squeezed her hand with his palm. Eleanor's beautiful brows were tightly knitted together. She bit her lips and wanted to pull her hand out of his palm. However, she had no choice but to endure it because Adrian was too strong. It was already nine o'clock. In order to avoid the crowd behind them, Adrian decided to take his family away first. Of course, Eleanor did not want to, but her son could not stay up all night, so she could only agree to leave. But when she left, she inadvertently noticed Ian and Kendra sitting together. Ian looked at the stage and she did not know what he was thinking, but Kendra had an annoyed expression on her face. 
Eleanor immediately followed Adrian and left first. The square was very spacious, and they could clearly hear the screams of excitement from the venue behind them. Before Eleanor got into the car, Summer immediately said a few words of appreciation to her. Miss Greenwich, I really like you. You are so talented. Thank you. Eleanor also felt that Summer was very cute. Summer and Noah got into their car while Eleanor sat with Adrian in his car. Flynn sat in the middle, looking sleepy. He would probably fall asleep on the way home. Eleanor held Flynn in her arms and patted him on the shoulder. You can take a nap, baby. Mommy, I love you so much. Flynn closed his eyes. Eleanor smiled and kissed him on the cheek. I love you too. Flynn closed his eyes and suddenly opened them again. He asked faintly, Then can you love Daddy too? Eleanor was slightly startled and could only smile. I don't hate him. Flynn closed his eyes in satisfaction and went to sleep. Adrian's eyes also fell on his son with concern. Hearing Eleanor's words, his gaze turned to her meaningfully. Was Eleanor speaking the truth? Did she really not hate him? Flynn had fallen asleep. Eleanor also felt sleepy. It was probably because of the performance on stage today that her nerves had tensed up. Therefore, after she relaxed now, she was very tired. The streetlights outside the window flickered in front of her as if they were hypnotizing her. Of course, Adrian noticed her sleepy expression. His hands passed across her chest, and his strong muscles came in contact with her. Eleanor immediately looked up and stared at him in surprise. Give Flynn to me! Get some rest! Adrian took Flynn from her arms after he finished speaking. Eleanor was so sleepy that she was afraid she would drop her sleeping son, so she let go. Anyway, there was still half an hour before she reached home, so she could close her eyes for a while. Eleanor had fallen into a deep slumber. She tilted her head and leaned on Adrian's shoulder. To her, having a strong pillow was the best thing. She did not think about who this pillow was. Adrian looked sideways and felt the soft face on his left shoulder. His body gradually tensed up. The car drove all the way to a high-end residential area. Half an hour later, it stopped downstairs. The bodyguard in front turned back and whispered to him, Sir, do you need me to wake Miss Greenwich up? No need. Come over and help me carry my son upstairs. Adrian felt that Eleanor was sleeping very soundly and could not bring himself to disturb her. The bodyguard immediately guessed what he meant and quickly got out of the car to carry Flynn. Flynn was sleeping soundly and was not woken up by their actions. The bodyguard carried Flynn and took a few steps back. Then he saw Adrian carry Eleanor out. Eleanor only felt her body being lifted, but she did not think much about it as she was deeply asleep. Her small face was buried in Adrian's strong and broad chest, and she slept even more soundly. Not long after, Adrian pushed open the door and let the bodyguard carry Flynn to the bed. After the bodyguard put Flynn down, he did not dare to stay any longer. He quickly nodded and left. Adrian was still carrying Eleanor in his arms. He wanted to take her back to her room, but then he thought about it and changed his mind. His bed was wide enough for the three of them to sleep. Why not let her sleep here? He gently placed Eleanor, who was sleeping soundly, on the bed. Eleanor and Flynn each slept on one side. Adrian took off their shoes for them and covered them with a duvet. Then Adrian went into the bathroom to take a bath. He and his son did not have the habit of sleeping naked. He wore a set of silk pajamas and laid between Flynn and Eleanor. Eleanor, who was in a daze, felt the bed shift. She subconsciously reached out and hugged Adrian. At this moment, one of her long, slender legs was on Adrian's waist and lower abdomen. Adrian was completely stunned. She even rubbed against it. Adrian's mind was blank and his eyes stared at the ceiling while his jaw was clenched. He groaned and his handsome body stiffened. Eleanor treated him like a blanket and pressed her soft body tightly into the man's embrace as if she was taking the initiative to let him feel her warmth. The man lowered his head and looked at the woman in his arms. Her face had a faint red hue. Adrian could not help but frown. The corner of his mouth curled into a smile. 
On the other hand, the child was very obedient when he was sleeping. His little face was a little red because of some sweat. It was probably because Flynn was by his side. Although Adrian was so close to Eleanor, he tried his best to control his desire and need to have her. However, if he wanted to sleep, then he could forget about it. He did not know how to extinguish the fire in his body. If this woman kept hugging him like this, he would not be able to sleep until dawn. Early in the morning, the sunlight outside the window shone on the elegant curtains, extending to the bed bit by bit. A glaring light began to kiss Eleanor's beautiful eyelids, causing her long eyelashes to tremble slightly. It seemed like she was about to wake up. Eleanor faintly opened her pair of sleeping eyes and thought that she was in her room. She gave a dazed look and prepared to continue sleeping, but she seemed to have seen a different scenery just now. Eleanor's eyes suddenly opened wide. It was not the decoration of her room at all. It made her mind go blank for a few seconds. She sat up and raised her head to take a look. This was not her room. It seemed to be Adrian's room. She was still lying on his bed in the clothes she had worn last night. Eleanor turned her head and saw that her son was still sleeping beside her. She immediately patted his head lightly. Her last memory was that she was extremely sleepy in the car and had fallen asleep. And what happened after that? How did she and her son return here? She had no memory at all. If she did not walk up, then she must have been carried up by someone. Was that person Adrian or his bodyguard? Eleanor's pretty face turned slightly red. No matter who it was, she could not remain calm when she was carried upstairs by a man. You're up? Suddenly, a slender and charming figure stepped out from behind the screen in the study room. Adrian was wearing white clothes. However, it could not conceal his cold aura. Eleanor quickly got off the bed and asked in a low voice with a red face, Why did I sleep on your bed last night? Also, who carried me up? Who do you want that person to be? Adrian narrowed his eyes and asked, Is that person your bodyguard? Eleanor asked curiously. This man did not seem to like her, so he definitely would not carry her. It's me, Adrian directly answered her. Eleanor immediately covered her mouth. After sleeping, her small face was pink and clear. Although her hair was messy, her face was very cute. Then why didn't you take me back to my room? This room was clearly only one door away from her room, but this man did not take her back. What's wrong with my bed? Adrian snorted. Was this woman blaming him? Eleanor immediately blinked. If I sleep in your bed, then you won't have a bed to sleep in. My bed is so big that it can fit four or five people. Do you think I won't have a place to sleep? Adrian smirked. Eleanor widened her eyes and exclaimed in a low voice, Did you sleep on the bed last night? This is my home and my bed. If I don't sleep on the bed, would I sleep on the sofa? Adrian looked at her and raised a brow. Eleanor's mind immediately drifted to the vivid dream from the previous night. Fragmented memories resurfaced, as if recalling a moment when she nestled beneath the covers. However, her recollection clashed with reality. Only a thin blanket adorned the bed, with the bulk of it draped over Flynn. Consequently, she found herself devoid of a comforting blanket to embrace. Could it be that she had been hugging Adrian last night? I didn't offend you last night, did I? Eleanor could only bite her lips and hope that this was not true. She was in despair. Your sleeping posture isn't good, Adrian snorted and turned to sit on the sofa in the study room. Eleanor followed him to avoid waking her son up. She lowered her voice and asked, What did I do? You touched me. Adrian shrugged. I touched you? Eleanor's pretty face turned red. This sentence contained a lot of information. Adrian elegantly picked up the coffee on the table. He had already drunk half of the fragrant coffee. He raised the corner of his mouth. You kicked me. Where did I kick you? Eleanor bit her lips. When she was sleeping, could she still kick randomly? Moreover, she believed that even if she kicked him, his body was so sturdy, he should not feel pain. Adrian's eyes revealed a touch of warmth. You put one of your legs on me. Where do you think you kicked me? Eleanor's brain exploded again. Sure enough, the comfortable pillow in her dreams last night was him, and she usually liked to sleep with one leg on top of the blanket. 
Eleanor opened her eyes and looked at the lazy and charming man. Then her eyes could not help but stare at his long and slender legs. Did I hurt you? Eleanor wanted to cry, but had no tears. She did not expect this matter to be so embarrassing. Adrian snorted. I will remember this. I will settle it with you when I have time in the future. Eleanor could only ask weakly, Do you want to go to the hospital to take a look? I will pay the medical fees. When the man heard that, his sword-like brows rose and he said coldly, I am stronger than you think. Eleanor was speechless. Early in the morning they were talking about this topic. She felt very embarrassed. Consider it as what I owe you. In the future, I will repay you. I am going back now. You take care of Flynn as well as of yourself. After saying that, Eleanor walked to the door and turned back. What is the password? One, two, three, four, five, six, Adrian generously told her. Eleanor was slightly stunned for a few seconds. It was that simple. However, she tried it and the door opened. She quickly pushed the door open and went back to her house. Then she was so embarrassed that she stomped her feet twice on the spot. Eleanor could almost imagine the scene from last night. It seemed that she not only hugged him all night, but also kicked him. She felt too ashamed. She walked into the bathroom and quickly took a shower and washed her hair. She looked at the time after she came out. It was still eight in the morning and her son must have woken up. She did not want to make breakfast, so she prepared to take him out for a meal later. On Saturday, Eleanor accompanied Maya to go and relax. Maya had been so nervous about preparing for the concert for a long period of time, so she could finally go with her and relax together. Eleanor blow-dried her long hair that reached to her waist and then received a call from Valerie. Valerie could not hold back her praise and then told her the good news. She was coming back this Wednesday to see her. After Eleanor chatted with her for a while, she changed into a sports outfit and went into Adrian's house. She pushed open Adrian's door and walked in. As expected, Flynn had already woken up. Mommy, you're up. Daddy and I are going to have breakfast outside. Flynn ran to her side and hugged her waist with his short arms. Yes, I thought so too. Let's go. Eleanor stroked Flynn's head. Adrian had already changed his clothes. His dark shirt paired with his cut pants made him look elegant and domineering. Eleanor thought of the awkwardness she had with him last night and felt a little embarrassed to look at him. Well, I know there's a good breakfast place downstairs. Let's go there and eat, Eleanor said to him. I can't just eat at any place, Adrian said proudly. Eleanor was a little embarrassed. She almost forgot that this man was not from the same world as her. He was a rich man in the upper class, and she was just a normal person. Then tell me where to eat, Eleanor could only ask him. Adrian reached out to Flynn. Flynn, let's go. Flynn immediately pulled Mommy along, afraid that Mommy would be left behind. Eleanor was also speechless. Anyway, she did not care. She would definitely not let this man take away her time with Flynn. They arrived at the parking lot downstairs. Adrian still had an over-the-top off-road vehicle parked there. Eleanor and her son sat in the back seat together. Adrian drove out of the residential area's entrance. The weekend morning was full of laziness. Flynn, where do you want to go today? Mommy will take you there, Eleanor asked her son. Mommy, I want to go to the amusement park. Flynn could not hide his excitement. After all, he was just four and a half years old. He was very playful and active. All right, Mommy will take you to the amusement park after breakfast, Eleanor promised. Daddy, will you come? Flynn asked the man driving ahead. Yes, of course, Adrian answered with certainty. Flynn was very happy, but Eleanor did not really want Adrian to go. With him around, there was always a sense of unease in her heart. Well, you don't have to accompany us anymore. If you are busy, you can go to the company to do your work. Eleanor forced a smile. Not busy, Adrian mumbled. How is that possible? You are in charge of such a big company. You should be very busy. Eleanor smiled. Flynn was worried. Mommy, Daddy said he was not busy. He can go with us. Eleanor was immediately speechless. It seemed that it was impossible for her to chase this man away. 
The breakfast restaurant Adrian took them to was indeed high class. It was not as noisy as the usual breakfast restaurants. It was very quiet. The dishes were also very good. Eleanor had a feast and indulged herself freely. While eating breakfast, Eleanor's phone rang. She picked it up and looked at it. She was slightly stunned for a moment. It was Mahal calling. She blinked her eyes curiously and answered the phone. Hello, Mahal. Eleanor, Maya's concert was very successful. She plans to hold a celebration dinner tonight. Let's go together. Mahal's pleasant voice sounded from the other side. Eleanor thought about it and agreed. Okay, I will come. Then it's decided. I will wait for you, Michal told her. Okay, Eleanor hung up the phone. Flynn, who was drinking juice, asked curiously, Mommy, where are you going tonight? Auntie Maya is holding a celebration dinner tonight. I must go there. So, can you stay with Daddy tonight? After she finished speaking, her gaze landed on Adrian's face. His cold gaze also looked at her and his eyes flickered with displeasure. You can't go, Adrian immediately ordered. Flynn immediately fought for Mommy's rights and interests. Daddy, let Mommy go. Mommy must really want to go. I will be back soon. Maya was also my employer this time. I must go, Eleanor explained to Adrian seriously, because she also hoped that she would be able to take on this kind of work in the future. So this time, Maya's celebration banquet would definitely have a lot of music producers present. It would also be beneficial for her to go. Adrian did not say anything else. After a while, he snorted, You must come back before 8 o'clock. All right, Eleanor replied. After saying that, she immediately felt that something was wrong. Adrian limited her time as if he had a right, and she actually agreed. Mr. Miller, Mrs. Miller, do you need anything else? the waitress came up to ask. Although she knew Adrian, she did not know Eleanor, but she heard Flynn calling them Daddy and Mommy. Therefore, she naturally thought that Eleanor was Adrian's wife. Eleanor's pretty face instantly turned red. She immediately wanted to say that she was not Mrs. Miller. However, this was to tell others that her son was an illegitimate child. So she did not say it out loud. Instead, she waved her hand politely. No need, thank you. When the waitress left, Eleanor still felt that her face was a little hot. At this moment, a low laugh came from the other side. Looks like you really enjoy being my wife. Eleanor's head buzzed. She quickly raised her head and glared at him. I don't enjoy it. I will allow you to consider yourself as Mrs. Miller outside in the future. Adrian gave her the authority. I don't need it. Eleanor declined without thinking. Flynn was holding a glass of orange juice and watching Daddy and Mommy bickering with each other. He actually found it very interesting. Not long after, they went to a nearby amusement park to play for the whole morning. They ate lunch nearby and went to the city in the afternoon. They didn't return home until four in the afternoon. Flynn had a good time and brought home his favorite robot. Eleanor had finally seen how this man pampered his son. Adrian almost brought back the airplane model that his son had set his eyes on. Eleanor stopped him. She had to teach her son a good lesson. Otherwise, her son would not be able to do anything big in the future. Eleanor received a call from Maya around 4.30. Eleanor, I asked Michal to call you in the morning. He said you would come. Meet me at the banquet hall on the third floor of the Regal Hotel at 6. Good. I just came back with my son. I'll change and come over. Eleanor replied with a smile. Yes, I will wait for you. Maya hung up the phone after she finished speaking. To Eleanor, Maya was like a big sister. She had helped her a lot. Therefore, she would like to be close to her. Eleanor immediately went back to her room and went to the bathroom to take a bath and wash her hair. After drying her hair, she put on some light makeup. Her skin glowed and illuminated the room. Tonight was a celebration banquet. If she dressed too casually, it would appear that she did not take Maya seriously. Eleanor found a gray sequined dress with a slightly plunging neckline. She had thought that it was too beautiful, but because she was with her son every day, she did not have the chance to wear it. Tonight, it was clearly put to use. After Eleanor put it on, she had the aura of a socialite attending a banquet. She applied a layer of lipstick, giving her a touch of class and elegance. At this moment, her phone rang. 
She quickly picked it up as it was Michal calling. Hello, Eleanor. I asked Maya for your address. Now I am downstairs. Are you ready to leave now? He asked. I'm still at home, she said. Then come down. We can drive there together. Michal offered. Thank you. Wait for me for a few minutes. Adrian had taken Eleanor's car to repair and had not brought it back. Therefore, it was not convenient for her to go there on her own. After everything was done, Eleanor decided to inform her son before she left. She pressed the password to the door and pushed it open to go in. She saw Adrian playing with two robots with Flynn with a tender look in his eyes. Eleanor smiled and bent down to say to her son, Flynn, I am leaving. Flynn looked up. Wow, mommy, you look so beautiful tonight. Adrian's gaze fell on her and he narrowed his eyes. He checked her out openly and his jaw dropped. Then he cleared his throat and looked away. Who was this woman trying to seduce by dressing like this? Oh, right. That star named Michal would definitely be there too. So her target was him? Eleanor's clear and bright eyes looked at Adrian. Take care of Flynn. I'll be back soon. Mommy, don't worry about me. I will be obedient. Go and have fun, Flynn said sensibly. Yes, thank you, son. I am going, Eleanor waved at her son. Just as she reached the door, Adrian could not help but ask, How are you going if you don't have a car? I have a friend to pick me up, Eleanor said. A man? What's his name? Adrian asked. His name is Michal. Eleanor pushed the door open and left. Behind her, Adrian's face turned dark. He could not help but think of something. He picked up his phone and said to the person at the other end, Drive Eleanor's car back. Okay, Mr. Miller, I will send it back soon, the person replied. No need, just send it back tomorrow morning, Adrian said and hung up the phone. Daddy, has mommy's car been repaired? Flynn asked with concern. Yes, it's fixed. Adrian pursed his lips and smiled. A black light flashed in his eyes. Her car had been fixed a long time ago. However, he did not ask anyone to drive it back. Instead, he lent her his car. He thought this woman would be grateful. Obviously, she was not. Eleanor was waiting for the elevator. When the elevator door opened, she saw Ian standing inside. He was about to walk out when he saw Eleanor standing at the door of the elevator. He was surprised and happy. Eleanor, you want to go out? Ian asked as he walked out. Eleanor was no longer as cold to him as before. She replied, Yes, I am going to Maya's celebration banquet. Are you driving? Do you want me to take you there? Ian did not want to let go of any chance to get along with her. Tonight, Eleanor's outfit made his heart beat faster. No need. Maya sent someone to pick me up. Goodbye. Eleanor walked into the elevator and Ian followed her. Eleanor looked at him in surprise and asked, Why aren't you going home? I want to take you downstairs. Ian stared at her with a deep gaze. Eleanor looked up and asked casually, I saw you and Kendra sitting together at the concert. Do you guys plan to be together again? Ian did not expect her to see it. His handsome face immediately became anxious, but his tone was very firm. I did not know that she was also coming. She came on her own. Eleanor bit her lips and smiled. You don't need to explain too much to me. After all, she is also my sister. I am just asking around. I am not very interested in your matters. Ian's handsome face revealed a trace of disappointment. Eleanor, I know that I owe you a lot, but I hope that you understand my feelings. I still love you. The elevator door opened and Eleanor walked out. She turned around and said to Ian, Forget about the past. We can be friends. Behind her, Ian heard this and felt a little disappointed and helpless. Eleanor was still willing to treat him as a friend. He should be glad. However, he also knew that the love between him and her had disappeared. No, he would not give up. He clenched his fists gently. Eleanor came towards the direction of the main road. When she saw a double flashing Porsche parked there, she immediately walked over. The window rolled down and it was indeed Mahal. Eleanor opened the door of the passenger seat and sat inside. She said to Mahal, Thank you for coming to pick me up. You're welcome. Mahal pursed his lips and smiled. She looked especially dazzling tonight. His heart missed a beat. Where is your son? 
Is there anyone looking after him? Michal asked curiously. Yes, my friend is taking care of him, Eleanor replied. It's not easy for a single mother to live with her son. To be honest, I was born into a single family. I can understand your hard work, Michal said. Eleanor was stunned for a while. Seeing him express his thoughts, she immediately became a quiet listener. Now that your career is successful and you have a reputation, your mother will definitely be proud of you, Eleanor comforted him. Yes, I'll let my mom enjoy her old age now. I don't need her to suffer anymore. Michal looked at her and said with deep affection, Eleanor, have you thought about giving the child a complete family? Michal asked tentatively. Eleanor was stunned for a few seconds and immediately understood what Michal meant. She pursed her lips and smiled. I've thought about it, but my son is still too young and is afraid of strangers. I will think about it when he grows up. Michal also understood what she meant. He immediately laughed. When you have time, bring your son out to play with me. Okay, Eleanor agreed, but in her heart, she thought that Adrian would definitely not agree. The night sky of the city was full of warmth. The velvet night was sprinkled with stars. Michal and Eleanor walked into the celebration banquet venue. Maya invited a lot of people today. There were at least 50 people. She arranged six tables of sumptuous dishes. There was also a small banquet hall next to it. It was thought to be a grand banquet. The moment Eleanor entered, Maya's friends all looked at her in surprise. Eleanor was outstanding enough and could be said to be famous and popular. Eleanor was also someone with a good family background. Facing this kind of scene, she did not show any fear. She was indifferent and calm, and her stance was that of elegance. Eleanor easily made people like her. Maya arranged for her to sit with Michal, which made people curious about her even more. Michal was a star in both music and film, and he was currently in the limelight. Therefore, Eleanor sitting beside him at this moment undoubtedly raised her social status by quite a bit. However, she did not have the intention of depending on anyone. Michal had helped her a lot during the concert, so she did not reject getting close to him. Of course, she had no ulterior motive for him. Dinner began. Everyone began to enjoy a sumptuous dinner. In the apartment, Adrian carried Flynn into the car and prepared to go to his mansion for dinner. Flynn was very happy in the car, and he missed his aunt and uncle. After Adrian called, the whole family was waiting for them. Half an hour later, Adrian led Flynn into the main hall. Summer immediately came over and led Flynn upstairs to play. Adrian asked his father, Are you really going to send Noah overseas? Yes, this is the best way to train him. He had the same thought. I've already contacted the school. He'll be there in a week. Henry replied. Your father and I will stay with him for a while. Maybe Summer will have to stay at your place for a while, Kayla said to him. No problem, Adrian nodded. He was happy to have his little sister accompany his son. There is one more thing. Your father and Mr. Stewart discussed it with each other. Marlo will come over to guide Summer's homework in the future, Kayla informed him. When Adrian heard that it was Gary's younger brother who was coming to educate his younger sister, he pursed his lips and smiled. Very good. Summer does need someone who can restrain her. In the past, Mrs. Stewart joked that she wanted me to marry Summer to Marlowe. Time flies. The two children have grown up, Kayla recalled with a smile. Marlowe is 20 this year, isn't he? Their marriage is hardly a prospect, Adrian scoffed. Yes, don't let Summer know about this. Otherwise, she won't let him tutor her for her homework. After Kayla finished speaking, she looked at her husband and son, indicating that they must not say anything. Because in their eyes, this sentence was just a joke in the past. It was not considered a promise. In a few days, I will invite the people of the Stewart family over for a meal. Come back and see if you can bring Flynn's mother back as well. Let's have a meal together, Kayla offered. Adrian slightly frowned. I will ask her. We need to take her opinion seriously, okay? We can't force her. After all, you were the one who did wrong. Kayla complained about Adrian. Adrian was speechless. Mom, can you not keep bringing this up? You have already done this. Why are you afraid that I will keep bringing it up? You have to make it up to her for the rest of your life. Also, you have to take care of Flynn. Don't keep following her around. 
Kayla looked at her eldest son's handsome face and felt a little worried. Even if he was handsome and self-disciplined, she hoped that his self-control could be better. You have to believe that your son is not that kind of person, Henry defended his son. Adrian smiled and put his arm around his mother's shoulder. Mom, I'm your son. You know what kind of person I am. Kayla looked at Adrian. The pride in her eyes could not be hidden. Dinner was ready. Summer led Flynn downstairs and Noah followed behind. The family gathered around the table to eat. Adrian watched his family take care of his son absentmindedly. He could not help but think of Eleanor today. A woman like her must have become the prey of many men at the banquet. There were many bad people in the music circles and the film circles. He hoped that Eleanor would not have any accidents tonight. Thinking about it, he made a decision. He said to Flynn, Son, are you willing to stay at Grandpa and Grandma's house tonight? Daddy, where are you going? Flynn asked. I'll pick your mother up later, Adrian said without hiding anything. Flynn, can you sleep with me tonight? Summer asked Flynn. Flynn smiled and nodded. Sure, then I'll sleep with my aunt. After saying that, he turned to Adrian and said, Daddy, then you must take good care of Mommy. I will. A complicated smile flashed across Adrian's eyes. On the side, Kayla and her husband pretended not to hear. Adrian was already 27 years old. They wanted him to marry and settle down. They hoped that Eleanor would become their daughter-in-law in the future. In the banquet hall, Eleanor was actually toasted repeatedly. Moreover, everyone present there were people with some fame in the music industry. Although Eleanor casually sipped her wine in the blink of an eye, two glasses of red wine had already been drunk. She was someone who could not hold her liquor well, so now she was feeling a little lightheaded. Miss Greenwich, I really admire your piano skills. Come, let me toast to you. Another slightly plump middle-aged man came forward and toasted. Maya whispered in her ear, This is our company's golden producer. When she heard that it was a producer, Eleanor naturally did not dare to neglect him and quickly raised her wine glass. Thank you. Miss Greenwich, I will drink a glass and you can drink half of it. Let's celebrate in moderation, the man immediately said. However, even just half a glass of wine was proving to be difficult for Eleanor, but she could not refuse. When Eleanor sat down, her head suddenly went blank and she hiccuped. She had drunk too much. Maya did not expect Eleanor's tolerance to be so low, but she was indeed a popular person at the banquet tonight. Michal went out to answer the phone and she had already had two more glasses. Eleanor, are you okay? Maya asked. I'm fine. I'm a little dizzy and can't drink anymore. Eleanor smiled and waved her hand. At this moment, her phone rang from the bag beside her. Maya quickly reminded her, your phone is ringing. Eleanor took the bag and took out her phone to take a look. She saw Adrian's name in a daze and reached out to pick it up. Hello? It was another hiccup that she could not control. Adrian had just left home when he suddenly heard Eleanor's hiccup and her abnormal voice. His brows immediately knitted together. Did you drink? I drank a little bit. Where's Flynn? Did he eat dinner? Eleanor asked him. At this time, another man came over to propose a toast. She quickly stopped him in embarrassment. Sorry, I'm not drinking now. I'm on a call. After saying that, Eleanor stood up from her seat and walked to a quiet place on the balcony. In the relatively quiet space, Eleanor regained her balance. Where are you and Flynn? She asked. He is at my parents' house. Where are you now? I'll come and pick you up, Adrian said. No need. I'm not done here yet. Are you saying Flynn isn't coming home tonight? Eleanor immediately asked in surprise and curiosity. What's wrong? Do you think you can bring someone home just because your son is away? Sure you can try. Adrian spat in a cold voice. Eleanor immediately frowned. What nonsense are you talking about? Where are you? Adrian asked again. Eleanor did not want him to come and pick her up. She said, I will go back myself. Goodbye. After saying that, she hung up the phone. However, she did not know that Adrian was already angry at the other end. The dim car lights highlighted his clenched jaw. Adrian's handsome face was shrouded in a haze. He picked up his phone and dialed the number of his assistant, asking him to immediately find Maya's celebration banquet address. 
After hanging up the phone, his sports car went straight to the center of the city. Two minutes later, his assistant told him the address of the hotel. Adrian stepped on the accelerator, and the sports car rushed forward like a beast. Eleanor returned to the dining room. Michal saw that her footsteps were slightly unsteady and could not help but ask with concern, I just heard Maya say that you drank a lot. Are you okay? I'm fine. Eleanor smiled and waved her hand. She sat in her seat and picked up her fork to eat. While she was talking, a group of people suddenly walked in from outside. The man at the front was in his 40s. Maya and Michal stood up in surprise. This person was very famous in the music industry, and they respected him. Sir, how come you are here? You said you couldn't make it. Maya quickly went to welcome him. In the music industry, the older generation of musicians had a high status. The younger generation did not dare to offend them. I was also eating nearby, so I took the time to come and see you guys. I will have a few drinks and leave. William Lancaster smiled and waved his hand. Everyone sit down and eat. After he finished speaking, his gaze landed on Eleanor. This lady is that outstanding pianist, right? I specially came to meet you. Let's have a drink. This time, Maya and Michal did not dare to help Eleanor hold back. Eleanor saw that this wine must be drunk. She smiled and raised the glass. Let me toast you. William took the wine glass and made a toast with Eleanor. His eyes carried a bit of admiration as he looked at her and the two drank a glass each. Eleanor was already a little drunk. After drinking this, she quickly coughed and Maya passed a tissue to her. You are all good juniors. Good luck. Let me toast everyone and I have to go after that, William concluded. Seeing everyone raise their glasses, Eleanor could only raise another glass of wine. This time, she only took a symbolic sip. William said to her, Miss Greenwich, you have a bright future. After saying that, he chatted with Maya for a while before leaving. Eleanor secretly sighed. She did not like this kind of social interaction the most. Following that, Eleanor's appetite also disappeared. She reached out her hand to support her forehead and felt that her head was heavy and her feet were light. Michal poured her a cup of warm water and handed it to her. Looks like you're really drunk. Come and drink a cup of water. Maya, can I leave early? I might really be drunk, Eleanor said to Maya. Okay, let me haul take you back. I really did not know that your alcohol tolerance is so bad. Come, eat some more, Maya advised. Finishing, Maya turned to Mahal and said, Take her home. Looking at her like this, you might have to walk her to the door. There is no one around her. How about I ask my assistant to go back and take care of her? Eleanor heard this and immediately waved her hand. Maya, there is no need. I am not drunk to the point of unconsciousness. Michal said to Maya, don't worry, I will take care of her. Maya also knew that Michal had a good impression of Eleanor, and she also had admiration for Michal, so she smiled and did not speak anymore. After Eleanor drank a cup of warm water and got up, she felt her head spinning. Michal immediately held her. You are really drunk. I will drive you back now. Okay, thank you. Eleanor nodded and tried to stand up straight. Her mind seemed to be blank and her thoughts were drifting. Maya still had many guests to greet. She could not get away from them and came to send them off. She asked Michal, Michal, take her home properly. Call me if you need anything. Don't worry, Maya, Michal nodded. Eleanor walked to the door of the hall with Michal's help. The waiter opened the door for them. The lively atmosphere behind them was immediately isolated. The corridor was very quiet. Eleanor's face was red, and even her breathing was ragged. She really did not have the strength to stand straight, so she could only snuggle into Michal's arms. The elevator is here. Let's go down, Michal said to her and led her into the elevator. At the entrance of the hotel, a sports car sped down and stopped at the entrance arrogantly. Adrian then got out of the car. He was emitting an aura that prevented strangers from getting close to him. His cold face revealed an inexplicable sense of danger. He forcefully pushed the button of an elevator. The elevator next to him suddenly opened. Adrian turned to look at it. He saw Michal holding Eleanor in his arms. Eleanor was even dizzier after taking the elevator. She was afraid that she would fall. So her hands naturally wrapped around Michal's waist. At this moment, she did not care about the distance between them. 
her life was more important. When Michal pulled her out of the elevator, he saw Eleanor hugging his waist. A hint of surprise flashed across his face. However, this surprise did not last more than three seconds. Suddenly, one of Eleanor's arms was grabbed by a big palm. Before Michal could react, Eleanor was pulled away from his arms. She felt the pain in her arms and her mind became clearer. She raised her big, blurry eyes, and when her body hit Adrian's hard chest, she looked up. When she saw Adrian's face, she was shocked. Why are you here? Michal stared at the man who took Eleanor away. He looked at the man in disbelief. It was Adrian Miller. Although he had seen this man for the first time today, he still recognized him immediately. Adrian's big palm still firmly grabbed Eleanor's arm. She could not help but cry out in anger, Adrian, you're hurting me, let go! Michal was shocked again. Eleanor actually knew Adrian. What was the relationship between them? Mr. Miller, Eleanor is drunk. I will take her home. Michal did not have the courage to snatch her away from Adrian. Of course, Adrian knew this woman was drunk. He knew she drank a lot just from the smell of alcohol on her breath. You can go back and continue the social meeting. I will take her home, Adrian said with a cold expression. Eleanor heard his words. She looked up and smiled at Michal. Michal, thank you. You can go back. He can drive me home. Do you know him? Michal was worried about giving her to Adrian. Eleanor was drunk tonight, and she was so beautiful that anyone would end up liking her. Although Eleanor was drunk, there were some things she knew to keep secret. He is my... Before she could say the word friend, she heard Adrian say, I am her man. Michal's eyes widened in surprise. Adrian coldly snorted and asked back, Do you have a problem with that? Michal never expected Eleanor to be Adrian's woman. He could only smile. Of course, I have no objections. I hope you take good care of her. With that, he handed Eleanor's bag to him. Adrian took Eleanor's bag with a gloomy expression. Michal was worried if Eleanor would be taken good care of tonight. In the next second, Adrian bent down slightly and carried Eleanor on his shoulder. He really put her on his shoulder. Eleanor was already so drunk that she was dizzy. This time, she seemed to be upside down. Adrian put me down. My head is so dizzy, she complained. A look of disappointment flashed across Michal's handsome face. He did not expect Eleanor to be Adrian's woman. He could only watch helplessly as Eleanor was carried away. Adrian pushed her into the passenger seat and slammed the door shut. He got into the driver's seat and started the car to rush forward. Eleanor was like a puddle of mud on the seat. She looked up slightly and breathed. Her red lips were slightly ajar and her eyes were misty and charming. Adrian's gaze coldly swept over her appearance. There was a look of anger in his eyes. No matter how beautiful this woman was after getting drunk, he did not have the heart to appreciate it. He would only feel annoyed. The sports car drove into the parking lot of the apartment very quickly. Eleanor suddenly covered her mouth with her hands. She looked like she wanted to throw up but had to endure it. Adrian saw it and he grimaced. You can't throw up in my car. In the next second, Eleanor looked at him and then threw up. Eleanor, Adrian cursed in a low voice. His car stopped in the parking lot. He quickly got out of the car and pulled her out of the passenger seat. However, Eleanor immediately covered her mouth when she was moved. Adrian's eyes widened. He wanted to stand away, but this woman could not stand steadily. If he let her go, she would fall to the ground. So he could only turn his handsome face away. Eleanor vomited directly on his chest. Adrian was about to go crazy. He loved cleanliness. Today, this woman vomited in his car and his body. He could not bear it anymore. After she was done, she pushed him away. I'm sorry, I didn't do it on purpose. She didn't do it on purpose. Adrian closed his eyes and clenched his jaw. He shouldn't have picked her up. Eleanor could not stand steadily. She immediately bent down. Adrian saw this and pulled her onto his back. He lifted her perky butt and carried her on his back as he walked towards the elevator. Don't throw up again. If you dare to throw up again, I'll kill you, Adrian threatened. The woman who was leaning on his back made a sound as if she was in a dream. 
The elevator went up to the 24th floor. Adrian opened the door of his apartment and threw Eleanor on the couch. He could not bear the smell on him anymore, so he quickly went into the bathroom to take a shower. Adrian spent 15 minutes taking a shower. After he came out with a towel, he looked at the couch and saw that Eleanor was no longer there. He was shocked and quickly walked to the side of the couch. Only then did he realize that she had fallen asleep on the floor. He rarely laughed or smiled, but looking at her, he could not help but guffaw like a madman. Eleanor's drunk appearance was simply too frightening. Her long hair was like grass that covered her face, and she was sleeping like a pig. When Adrian thought of her body reeking of alcohol, he felt very uncomfortable. He went back to the bathroom and poured water into the bathtub. He then reached out and picked up Eleanor, who was on the ground, and walked towards the bathroom. Eleanor seemed to have sensed something. She opened her misty eyes. Adrian, where are you going to carry me? To take a bath. Adrian did not hide it from her. I don't want a bath. I want to sleep. Eleanor felt that her eyelids were so heavy that she could not open them. She was so tired and dizzy. You must take a bath, Adrian answered firmly. I don't want it. Eleanor pushed her small hand on his chest. Adrian was not wearing his shirt. Her hand was pressed against his bare chest. Adrian's body suddenly tensed up. His eyes were covered with a layer of lust. Eleanor best not provoke him tonight. Otherwise, he would not be able to behave like a gentleman. Eleanor resisted. But no matter how she pushed him, Adrian was like an iron wall, unshakable. Adrian... Let go of me. Before Eleanor could finish her sentence, she was thrown into the bathtub. She was so surprised that she quickly grabbed the edge of the bathtub and sat up. Otherwise, she would be choked by the water. Eleanor's body was soft. The area below her chest was soaked in the bathtub. Her long hair was scattered on the surface of the water. At this moment, her face was rosy and glossy. Her expression was charming. Her red lips were dotted with water droplets. She was so beautiful that she looked like art. Adrian clearly felt his throat run dry. He bit his lip and then averted his gaze. Eleanor also felt that the water was very warm and soothing. Therefore, she lay on the edge of the bathtub and continued to sleep. Adrian narrowed his cold eyes. He bent down and pulled away the long hair behind her head. He found the zipper of her dress and pulled it to the end. Eleanor immediately woke up in fright. She covered her chest with her hands, and Adrian just happened to pull the dress off her two thin arms. Eleanor wrapped her arms around her chest and looked at him with her big, drunken eyes full of vigilance. Adrian, don't go too far. If you dare to touch me again, I will. Probably because she was drunk, her brain was not clear and she could not finish her sentence. Not long after, she shook her head and closed her eyes to sleep. Adrian immediately held her little head with one hand and helped her wash herself with the other. This made Eleanor relax. She actually moaned in comfort and did not resist. Adrian's eyes were as dark as the night sky. His large palm rubbed her tender skin red. Her bra had not been removed. Adrian bit his lips and let her sleep on the edge of the bathtub. He took off her bra and threw her underwear on the ground. Eleanor was lying in the bathtub, unconscious. She did not know that her body was exposed in front of Adrian's eyes. He thought of something and took out a bottle of mouthwash from the shelf beside him. He lifted Eleanor's chin and forced her to open her mouth slightly and take the mouthwash in. I don't want to drink anymore. Eleanor thought it was wine and immediately spat on the ground. After a few rounds, Adrian felt that there was no smell on her breath. He pulled her out of the water and quickly wrapped her up with a towel. Eleanor's long hair was wet, and Adrian could not let her sleep with wet hair. He put her in front of the bed and let her long hair hang down. He took a hair dryer and got to work. Her black and smooth hair was like silk. It was so beautiful and dense. After blowing it dry, he started to play with it fondly. Eleanor had already fallen into a deep sleep and did not know what had happened to her tonight. When Adrian finished doing all of this, it was already 10 o'clock. He let out a slight sigh. In the future, if Eleanor dared to get drunk again, he would definitely throw her out and ignore her. As he thought of this, even he knew he could never do that to her. 
Thinking of the scene of her hugging Michal's waist today, he could not help but feel a trace of anger surge in his chest. He pushed Eleanor to the side and laid down as well. Eleanor pouted her red lips in dissatisfaction. Her back was clearly facing him, but she suddenly turned over again. Under the blanket, she was naked and immediately laid in Adrian's arms. One of her legs was still hanging by his waist. Then, she felt something poking her. She reached over and pushed it a few times, but it was still there. She had no choice but to turn around and turn her back to Adrian. Adrian, on the other hand, was not breathing anymore. He had his jaw and fists clenched tightly. Was she trying to stir up trouble on purpose? A look of desire flashed through Adrian's eyes. Eleanor was drunk and provoked him first. Could she be irresponsible when she was drunk? Then why did he need to be a gentleman who did not mess around? Adrian gritted his teeth and stared at her slender neck. He wanted to bite her. However, Flynn suddenly appeared in his mind. Eleanor was Flynn's mother. She was the woman who ran out on him five years ago. There was still such hostility between them. Adrian let out a breath. One day, Eleanor would come to him and give herself to him. After Adrian thought about it, he immediately lifted the blanket and walked towards the fridge wearing only a pair of boxers. Right now, he urgently needed ice water to quench the fire. That night, Adrian did not return to his bed. That night, Eleanor slept very soundly in his bed.